a lot of us look for an age statement on our whiskey, don't we? We like the reassurance of an age statement. We always have them for a long time. And you might remember, for those who've been drinking and enjoying whiskey for long enough, that about 10 or 12 years ago or so, there was a, there was a glut of non-age stated whiskies appeared on the market back then. Now, I'm, I'm suddenly panicking that I didn't plug the mic in, but I think I'm on. <laughs> I've got Roddy over the back, we've been very distracted. Sorry, there was a glut of non-age statements appeared, and a lot of people panicked that that was going to be the way of things, that that was the age statement was taken away from us. Well, it's funny how whiskey follows cycles. You know, if you think about the, the, the expansion of the age statement from the 1980s, and then that slowly been taken away from us about, as I say, 10 or 12 years ago. Where are we just now in 2023, another 10 or 12 years down the line? Because I think the age statement today is very, very different. And I think it's different from anything else that we've seen before. But rather than me rant on about that tonight, I've got a sidekick. And tonight is indeed a Roddy show. I'll see you in a second. Whiskey folk, hello everybody, welcome to the VPUB, welcome to Thursday night. Sorry about that panic as I was doing the intro there because Roddy and I are trying out uh, the new mics uh, tonight so that we're not relying on a central mic with all of that kind of uh, a wee bit out of reach echo type thing going on. Instead, we've, we're hooked up to mics tonight in the hope uh, that it'll work fine. So if you hear any sipping, any gurgling or any giggling and laughing happening in the background, that's because uh, Roddy is currently mic'd up, which is fine, so we can get any kind of background giggles. He's sitting over the back there doing a wee bit of a post appearance research, I think. Anybody well, any, anyway, sorry, welcome everyone. I hope you're all doing very, very well on another week Thursday night's VPUB. Tonight's topic is very, very sensitive and close to a lot of people's hearts. A lot of us really do kind of look for the reassurance of an age statement on a bottle to the point that some people that I've been speaking to recently eh, may choose indeed not to consider even purchasing a bottle because it chooses not to disclose the age statement on there. I think what's interesting about that is that to a certain extent, the malt drinker of today, the whiskey drinker of today, but certainly the malt drinker, has been a little bit conditioned, interestingly, by the industry. And that industry is never a static thing. Whiskey is traditional, it's sometimes conservative, but one thing that it is not is static. It's always morphing, changing and moving and evolving. And I think it's interesting to kind of take stock every now and again and consider where we are with age statements in 2023. You might remember a VPUB I did about a year year or so ago. I don't remember if it was last year or the year before, but I titled the, the, the VPUB uh, provocatively the end of the 10. And we talked about that, that concept of all the, the new distilleries that's coming on board and how many of them are actually going to embrace a 10-year age statement. Well, I've got one in my hands here tonight, and I'm hoping that we get an opportunity to open this and talk about it at some point tonight. But look at what I have. This is a 10-year-old age-stated whiskey. You can see up here it says non-chilled filter. This is natural colour. It is at 46% ABV, which is great. But that big 10-year age statement is front and centre. And this is from a, a brand new distillery. It's This distillery has only been going since, I think, uh, 2013, 2014. Well, Clearly, it must be 2013 for them to have a 10-year-old product in 2023. Um, so this is probably as early as they could possibly release a 10-year uh, aged product. It's still sealed. I bought it this week purely because it was available and uh, the topic of this VPUB, it suited very well. Um, but to a certain extent, it's releases like this or the prospect of releases like this that has inspired me to talk about that very topic. So what we're going to do tonight is that Roddy and I have kind of got some blind drams to share. I, I don't know what he's brought me. He doesn't know what I've poured for him. And we've also got a couple of drams here, actually, from Sarah in the Good Spirits Company. She's given both Roddy and I a blind to do at the same time. And we've got her answer in a wee envelope. Uh, she's probably been quite tricky with us, but it should all just be for fun. And as we go through these, these different 
aged whiskies, what we're asking is, are these whiskies delicious? Is the quality there? Is the flavour there? All of these, all of these things that we look for in our whiskies, and but all of these things that tend to be post purchase pleasures, right? We only know that the whiskey is good quality after we've bought it, that the flavour is good. We only know all of these things after we've bought the bottle. The age statement is so much about that pre-purchase reassurance. That's why so many people have come to lean on it. There are so many non-age statements whiskies available on the shelves today. I would suggest that there are more non-age statements today than there has ever been in the recent past. I would also suggest that maybe those non-age statements are there for a very different reason to the non-age statements that first appeared about 10 or 12 or slightly more years ago. What say you? be interested to hear all your feedback throughout tonight. I'll be trying my very best, despite it being a Roddy pub, with Roddy alongside me very shortly, uh, to try and keep my eye flowing on the flowing chat as well tonight. So uh, welcome, everybody. I hope you're all doing very well. Before I get involved with uh, Roddy, I'm going to jump into the lounge and welcome some of you beautiful whiskey folk and dedicated barflies. How are we all? Hell's with us saying good evening to you and to that fellow Roddy. He'll be here in a wee minute, Hell, and I hope you're doing very well and I hope Andy's alongside you too. Uh, Danny Keener is saying good evening, watching from Rotterdam. I'm out here for a few days uh, of plenty, oh, plenty of sunny weather and some great whiskey bars. Also good for you, Danny. Enjoy yourself while you're there. Uh, I'm a wee bit uh, sad that the Rotterdam event, uh, the whiskey base event, the gathering isn't going ahead in Rotterdam this year, uh, but I hear that it will be going ahead uh, again in 2024. I'm very keen to make that event one of these years. Herman is here from the Netherlands. Uh, you are brothers and mics. <laughs> brothers and mics, Herman, absolutely. Um, I'm just reminding Roddy that he's mic. I should have mic uh, muted his mic, but it should be fine. He's sitting there quite quietly in the background waiting for uh, his uh, call to come up and s grab a seat next to me. Circumbendibus is in. That's a great name, Circumbendibus. Cheap age statements can still be had independently. I'm drinking a 20-year-old blended malt via Thompson Brothers for £83 here in France. May even be a teaspoon Macallan. Fantastic. The most important thing is, surely, Circumbendibus, is that it's delicious and that you're enjoying it. Nice to welcome you in. Max Kreitner is here as well. Good evening, my friend. Good evening to you, Max. Peter Box is saying hi, Roy and Roddy. Some of you are already using your Roddy emoji. What would be amazing is that when Roddy does pull up a stool next to me, you just flood the chat with his emoji. That would be a nice welcome for him. Lee J is in as well saying good evening, Roy and Roddy. Good evening to you, Lee J. And David Evans is celebrating being a member of the Barflies. Wow. For 37 months. David, thank you so much for your support. Evening. Drinking on each statement. Uh, King's Inch Director's Cut. Okay, that's what is that what you're having tonight? A King's Inch Director's Cut. A uh, fantastic David. Nice to have you in, buddy. Peter is saying evening, Roy. Good to show up. Uh, the thumbs need a push up. Well, it's very early in the night, Frank, my friend. But thanks for reminding folks. So if Roddy and I are bringing a decent V pub at some point tonight, it might be good for you to remind me and everyone else uh, to leave a wee thumbs up. It certainly helps. It's very good for the reassurance of folk to pick this up on the replay that it is a legitimate live stream eh, about whiskey um, and the, the thumbs up tend to reassure people. I can see it ticking up right now, Frank. It's very much appreciated, my friend. Thank you. Danny Hevington is saying even right. Hope you're well. Looking forward to Roddy tonight. I am as well, buddy. And Gino Kimo is saying hello, right? Looking good as always, sir. Well, we were just talking about that. I was trying to mess around with the lighting tonight. The camera's a wee bit further back than usual. <laughs> for Roddy and I to, to have space here. And I realised just how, I mean, generally my complexion is generally pink, uh, but I think some people get concerned when when the pink <laughs> is very obvious. It's just the way that it is. I've got a wee fan on in the background and, and things. And, uh, but thank you for your compliment. Uh, I'm feeling good, Danny. Uh, if I'm looking good, uh, then that makes me feel even better, buddy. Gino is saying, oh, sorry, it was Gino that was saying that. Thank you, Gino. Whiskey Weekend Ram, Harrow is, is in St. Wolfburn 10, tasted it as a festival, was not blown away, but a stable whiskey. Um, well, we're going to have a go tonight, eh, Harrow, and see how we got on with it, um, but that will get quite a few blind rams to get through before we get there. Um, but I'm curious to try it. It's, it's quite a, would you call it a benchmark whiskey? Yeah, I think I would go as far to call it a benchmark whiskey, certainly for Wolfburn, but I think new distilleries in general. And Brian Storm at the same, good evening, Roy, good evening, Barflies, interesting topic tonight. 
as we see so many young whiskies coming out uh, that are very good indeed. Old doesn't necessarily mean the best these days. I would agree with you, Brian. I would agree with you. And I think that there's another side that's coming into play that's making uh, older aged whiskies a wee bit less attractive. And of course, that's price. And hopefully we'll get a chance to touch on that as, as well tonight. George Ellison, good evening, Whiskey Folk and Agua VT. I hope you're very well. I am George, and it's good to welcome you in again, my, fr my friend. Uh, a wee dram coming from Justin Wan. Thank you very much, my friend. He's saying, uh, let's get your dram earlier tonight. We'll have to hop off earlier uh, and hit the thumbs up, everyone. Justin, thank you very much for your generous dram, buddy. Cheers to you. Hoping, hoping to get a chance to welcome you. Uh, uh, when you arrive in Scotland, Justin. Good to see you. Annie Tiger is saying, uh, good evening, Roy. Good evening to you and Max is saying, no problem with the pink. Hides the typical Glasgow pale blue skin. <laughs> Absolutely, we've got to tan pink first, haven't we, Max? And Ian Bruce is saying, good evening, Roy. Has NAS helped allow people uh, to gravitate away from thinking older is better? I don't know if NAS in itself has taken an open mind, I think, amongst the whiskey enthusiast drinker uh, to embrace uh, non his statement whiskies. I think what's making people a wee bit more open-minded to it is probably some of the really good quality whiskies that's come out with a young age statement on there. Maybe you could argue Arbeg's five-year-old wee beastie, but certainly Thompson Brothers' six-year-old uh, blend uh, and their eight-year-old blended malt, for example. Uh, lots of independent bottlers, SMWS and Carn Moore and many, many more, just bringing out age-stated whiskies in the single digits and reassuring people that they can. some of these whiskies can be really quite tasty at a young age. And then a lot of the new producers stepping out with their product. And of course, with a new producer, when they first release their product, maybe it's a three- or a four-year-old or something very young, but they're not suggesting that that's what their whiskey is going to be like long-term. What we're actually able to do is, is enjoy a snapshot of that whiskey as it's released at three years and then maybe four years and five and as it gets older there's more and more mature stock in their core release mix and we get to try and witness and almost monitor the progress over time it's quite an amazing privilege when you think about it that way i mean a lot of us how many of us would love to go back to 1831 and taste a three-year-old spring bank right it would be we would consider that a privilege, and that's the times that we're living through just now. However, these whiskies from all of these new producers will change over the years. Um, it is really um, a remarkably positive thing to talk about when you think about it. Um, but at the same time, I think the challenge that's coming in for a lot of us right now is how much all of this is going to cost. Looks like Jimmy Legg has bought me a dram. Jimmy, always brilliant to have you. And he's saying happy 55th birthday, Mr. Duck. Mr. Duff, uh, you only look 53. <laughs> uh, thank you, Jimmy. Uh, it's not my birthday yet. Um, I don't know if we'll be live during my birthday. If, if the clock strikes midnight tonight, uh, you might suddenly witness a 53-year-old Acrovite. Um, but right now, I'm hanging on, clinging on to the last couple of hours that remains of my 52nd year around the sun. Jimmy, thank you very much for remembering. Uh, you're a star, my friend. Nice to welcome you in. Cheers. Things are shaping up, Jimmy, for Jimmy Fest on the 30th of September this year. Drink, uh, drinks whiskey is in. Uh, what's happy birthday, Aquavite? Uh, hold, 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 hold on just now, just wait a wee bit. No birthdays, no birthdays. Uh, tonight is not my birthday. Aidan is saying, uh, but thank you, Aidan is saying uh, happy, happy <laughs> May 5th birthday to both of us, Roy. Cheers. Aidan, I'm going to raise a glass, glass to that. Um, we both have Star Wars birthdays, of course, today is May the 4th, and May the 4th be with you. But I didn't realise that May the 5th, uh, until recent times, uh, was also a Star Wars birthday, Revenge of the 5th. So here's to you, Aidan, and many happy returns when it comes, buddy. Thank you very much for your dram. Cheers. All right. As the VPUB is normally quite a kind of meandering thing, we don't put a curfew or a time limit on anything, but when Roddy's here, it tends to meander a wee bit more. So let's not hang about. Let's welcome Roddy on. If you're good to step forward, my my friend, I think uh, you have been, please flood the chat with your Roddy emoji for the barflies out there that has access to such a thing. And welcome uh, my pal Roddy back behind the bar. And I, I genuinely mean that it's by popular request. It's been, I was obviously a bit uh, neglectful and delinquent and he said 
people start to task went, went look at this <laughs> that's incredible <laughs> Um, and it, it's just been it's hilarious. What tends to drive your appearance on the VPUB is topic, right? Mm -hmm, if we've mm -hmm. got a topic that we want to talk about, or you think you come up with something that you think is interesting or whatever, that will drive it <laughs> rather than kind of any kind of regularity. <laughs> 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 so Alan's got access to the Roddy emojis, but he's chosen <laughs> he's chosen to do that instead. Oh, for goodness sake. Brilliant. And uh, Nick Gascoigne is suggesting that your glass is empty, but we've both no, got, no, no, we've no, got the... a wee bit of chininic in the glass, yeah, right? We do, really. Um, but that's brilliant. That's tremendous. Uh, it's wonderful to see all of those. It's actually quite intimidating to see all, <laughs> of, the, all of those millions and millions of Roddies in the chat. I, I think that what we're going to hope to achieve tonight, and I think what you often do when we get together and we chat about things, is because the, the VPUB and us, I get behind the bar and I just get to soapbox a little bit right i get to run and mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you know the, the community the chat will often kind of counter it and and come in with a you know things to you know suggest that what i'm saying is not quite right or mm -hmm. but generally speaking it's me it's it's like it's almost like an upload right <laughs> when you're here there's a kind of exchange and I, I, what i'm always mindful of is the ability for me to make a statement or to su to suggest a thing and, but this isn't just in the VPUB, this is at the Whiskey Club and any time I'm in your company and enjoying your, your just the conversation generally, where you've got this kind of thoughtful, different way of thinking about it, this kind of maybe more pragmatic approach or maybe just a bit more experience that makes you think, well, actually, and there's something else that comes in. And it's always, for me, it's always like, I don't want things to be complex. <laughs> I want them well, to the, be simple and I easy to the, understand. And, you know, the... Um, a, you know, Scotch whisky is a complex thing. It's been going for hundreds of years, and yeah, it, it's um, you know, it's evolved in a number of different directions, and you know, it's like any. Um, I, I, what did I see? I saw something the other day on social media to do with if you get interested in anything, you know, whether it's Scotch whisky or whether it's um, motorbikes or or. Um, you know, fishing, you know, yep. um, there's the there's the appeal of the thing itself, yep. you know, like, so we enjoy a dram because it, it's flavoursome. Yep. Or, you know, you, you like fishing because you like to be out in the open and you hope to catch something for your dinner. Um, or you like going fast on your bike. But there's also that s subsidiary or parallel appeal of going down the rabbit hole of Just your topic absolutely you know? geeking out on so you thing. know yes the yes. if you if it's fishing then and, and i know nothing about fishing so i'm going to get this wrong folks but you know the you then you, you 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 make you tie up the flies and you have the complicated things that you attach to the line and specific and you've, flies for yeah specific and, the, and you see that this, 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 <laughs> i don't know I mean, I don't, I don't or know. you know if you're if you if it's motorbikes then you know, I was the last time I was talking to to Ralphie. He, he you know, how he did the. So, uh, I'm sure you know this, but Ralphie did did a, a world land speed yes, record. That's right. Uh, yeah. On a very specific category of bike. Yes. Yeah. Uh, was it turbo two stroke push rod? I, I don't know. Somebody will know in the chat. But anyway, he told me that over the years he's, he's accumulated like eight motorbikes. Because he's fallen down the road, yeah, right? Like, yeah, you yeah. know the, the. So that's a personality trait. That, so the, that, yeah, yeah, yeah. So the the point is that for me, one of the fascinating things about whiskey is just exploring the, the byways of it. You know, the yeah. thinking about the the ramifications of all the the little things. Well, I think I think that that's what the community have come to appreciate about the the different vibe, the different feel of the VPUB when you're here, because we get to chat. What we try to do as much as possible is have the conversations that we've been having for the run up to tonight's live, for example, but be able to do it on topic, hopefully, yeah. mm -hmm. and if, and so that people can participate in it too. David Hong's brought us a wee dram. He said, eh, to Roy and Roddy, wish you both the best. That's a generous dram, buddy. Eh, Cheers, welcome David. back, Roddy. Cheers, David. Thank you very much, my friend. Cheers. <laughs> so we hope that, you know, my, nice. my ranting, eh, that was just a wee flora and fauna. Yeah, it's uh, lovely. Genetic, right? yeah. Just very light and creamy. There's great drums of flora and fauna. They're still a, they're still a wee, such good value at the moment. Are they now? 
fingers crossed they stay that way. Well, okay, there's a tip for you because uh, I'm just in a big huff with the issue right now and I'm t not throwing a lot of money that nah. way generally. So um, just, you know, current... Well, it might come into the chat tonight. But I think what, as well as the kind of yin and yang, the, the kind of thoughtfulness that you bring to some of my kind of more outlandish statements and things, I think what we what will be a nice thing for us to do tonight is to exchange some drams that we feel are, are interesting in some way that are blind because you're here we, we have to do it blind it's just it's just mm -hmm. the fun of it you know mm -hmm. it's i know that we both love blind tasting yeah. right yeah, yeah. and you know the, the more that we can do the blind tasting and not really care about the things we get wrong not really have uh, it's just the more we can encourage other people to do the same thing and kind of remove that kind of concept of i think it comes from wine maybe the idea that you can pick up a a glass of wine and tell the great variety and maybe the geography or something i don't know but the, the chance of you doing that in whiskey is it's well i've not met anyone that's capable of doing it successfully uh, time and time again but i mean it's just yeah. good fun to do it and yeah. i think it's good to relax i think it's good to remember and let remi whiskey remind you to be humble but tonight we've done a very specific thing i've asked for an interesting a young and an old so i'm i'm relying on a the dram that, that Sarah selected for the interesting. Right, uh, okay. So we, we've made a wee, so Sarah's brought us, a, I think it's a great idea. Thank you, Sarah, thank you so much. Because that means that we can do a blind one together, mm -hmm. right? And then we've got five drams of which two are for me and three are for you that we'll just alter alternate through. Yours is still intact to the original plan, interesting old young, okay? And mine are something of that sort with one missing mm -hmm. you've suggested the interesting one is missing so i've got an old and a young here great fantastic so that's we'll be able to get a chat and it's not to test each other we're not testing each other here but there is an element of is it obviously a young whiskey is it an obviously an old whiskey mm -hmm. and also a, it'd be a back a backdrop to the chat that we're going to have about age statements tonight so as we s approach sarah's Dram, I'm going to just ask you a question to kick things off. And it's not necessarily my, I'm just going to make a statement in order to start the discussion, okay? So thanks, Sarah. I don't know what you've poured for us. But, <laughs> He's a <die. laughs> but Let's see how we go on. Cheers. Hope the mics are working. I hope you can hear Roddy nice and clearly. <laughs> for um, me, I made a video a few years two, back. Yeah. <laughs> I made a video a few years back called the ABCDs, okay, of whiskey. Mm -hmm. And it was A for age statement, B for bottle strength, C for chill filtration, and D for dye coloring, right? Mm -hmm. It's kind of crowbarred in the D for the C thing, right? There's two C's, that was a problem. So we are now talking, in fact, I was in discussions just with someone recently that the A is actually a small A now. And that was at their suggestion, which is interesting. So it's still part of it. The, you know, the, I think we're still keen to know the age or know the details, but I think we're relaxing a wee bit now. That's telltale of when I made that video, the age statement was such an important element. It was one of the four corners. It was one of the ABCDs. But now the reason that we might make it, oh, we can maybe consider making that a small A now, is that there are so many good quality non-age statement whiskies out there, often from new producers. Or there are often such good quality young single digit age statement whiskies out there that reassure us that even if the non-age statement stuff is young young whiskey can be good too so my statement is age statement is essential and scotch whiskey malt whiskey i'm just making a statement and ask what would your thoughts be would you agree <laughs> um so the it's complicated, is the answer. You know, Good. they're, they're, they're um, you know, we, we were knocking this back and forth in email and uh, before the session tonight. And I think one of the things that I didn't manage to get around to saying was, is that, um, I mean, we did touch on the fact that all of us get very excited when, you know, if we get the chance to taste a really old whiskey, you know, if we're at a show, and, and somebody's got a 40 year old, then that's the one that everybody's going to sort of want to taste. Gravitate towards. Gravitate Absolutely. towards. Ooh, um, 40 yeah. years, 40 years, right? Um, but, you know, once once you start digging into it, there, there's, I think you kind of need to, uh, 
you know, split it into at least two branches, probably more. Like so, the like the the baseline for all Scotch whisky is that it's three years old. Um, so you know, you're tasting a no age statement whisky, um, and you know that it's at least three years old. But if you remember, for example, um, five six years ago, Compass Box um, had a three year old whisky. Three year old deluxe, yeah. Yeah. You know, and I think they were the tagline for it was that this is not a deluxe whiskey or something like that. Yeah, because yep. they had a three year old component, but you know, typical compass box, they were trying to beard the lion, you know, goad the SWA because we behind the in the back channels. We knew that most of that whiskey was was thirty and forty. Well, I, I mean it's anecdotal, right? I mean there's lots yeah. of stories about it at the time, but we heard that actually the three year old component was like akin to teaspooning. Yeah, it was such a small uh -huh. amount, like a single measure, a single glass yeah. uh -huh. of whiskey or something that was thrown out of the vatting that rendered the entire liquid uh, identical, of course, but rendered it a three year old whiskey just by that simple act. Um, which I think is maverick, is very kind of maverick mm -hmm. and a irreverent thing to do, and it kind of demonstrates a point. But actually, the age statement is there as a quality control, right? Mm -hmm. um, so well, you see, if you go back to the origins of the age statement, um, which you know we were looking it up, the it, go, it goes back to about 1915, and it was a, a it was a necessity of of coping with the war, you know the the Lloyd George introduced the, the the age statement as a way of because at that point most whiskey would have been under three years old he, he was like if I make it that you can only sell three-year-old whiskey then that's going to invalidate a whole bunch of stock but it was also thought that, gonna, that it would mellow the whiskey out and make it less fiery and, and affect people well, in a slightly different way yeah, I mean yeah that so he was doing two things he was he was he was saying if I introduce this three-year-old thing then that's going to push back the release of a bunch of whiskey, which means there's going to be less whiskey on the market, which means it'll be more barley for 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 bread or or, yep. or whatever. And it also, because he was a teetotaler, he had this notion that the the workforce and the the troops were were the below, great the great unwashed. They, they were yeah. below par because yeah. because they were drinking. Um, a, so the, the the origins of the age statement weren't necessarily. Uh, in my view, to, oh sorry, I've bumped the mic. Sorry, folks. Uh, <laughs> sorry. The, it weren't necessarily, in my view, to do with with quality. You know, I mean, since then, the uh, the SWA has taken that and and used it as a as an emphasis, uh, as a way of emphasising quality. And you know, all of the things that 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 they've they've refined the regulations into are about quality. You know, like the fact that. You know, whiskey has to malt whiskey has to be bottled in Scotland now as a way of controlling, yeah, the output. Whiskey, yeah. You know, um, that the the whiskey has to be matured in Scotland. It's you know that is to do with quality. But I, I want to come back to the two strands that I think are important for the kind of whiskies that we're talking about tonight, which is really the, the kind of way that Scotch has gone. So we had the. Uh, the boom of the 60s and 70s through into the 80s and then we had uh, a big slump which meant that coming into the 90s and the early 2000s there was all of a sudden this very well aged stock of whiskey in barrels that were perhaps the the wood policy is is less rigorous than it would be nowadays so there'd be far more refill barrels yep but that suits older whiskey Absolutely, so there's yes. so there's that stream of whiskey which you know the it got aged just because the distillers couldn't sell the whiskey because of the slump and you know a lot of the people in the chat tonight and, and you and i might have um you know learned about whiskey in the the days when you would just not look at a no age statement whiskey yep. because all of the choices of of age statement whiskey uh, were, were were so glorious, yeah. And then there's there's a more modern stream of whiskey, which um, would be the 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 new distillers of the new millennium, who, for financial reasons, they need to start, they need to plan to put out a product that's three or four years old. So they're following uh, a lot of them the model that was 
uh, devised by Jim Swan. Yes. Yep. Where you're using STR casks and you're using very active wood that you know the whiskey's only going to be in the wood for three years, four years, and that's fine. So, you know, if it were to stay 10 years in that wood, it would be it would be over oak. And also to, to, to design the blocks of the process yeah. to be uh -huh. very kind to that maturation as well. Mm -hmm. um, uh, yeah, yeah. We see it. We see it with uh, with Rassi, where they've got, you know, it's 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 on the bottle. They've got. They show you. They've got the two, the peated and unpeated stream, and the three cask types. And that's, that's right. The, that's right. You know, they've got this recipe made up that they can put out a whiskey at three years old, and it, well, it's, it's chink, just, it's chink -a uh which is, if I remember my <laughs> my studies <laughs> from Rassi, like a couple of weeks ago, uh, Quercus Milenbergi, I think. And yeah, then sure. Quercus Alba is actually rye cast they're using, mm -hmm, yeah. and then Quercus Robur is or Petrea. Petrea, the is is the the wine casks. Yeah, yeah. European mm -hmm. oak wine casks, yeah. and and they they're putting it on there. So, uh, and I think I think that somebody's already mentioned it. I think uh, Falsgraf, good to see in class. He's saying uh, true for me. The age statement or vintage is part of the overall transparency, not value in itself. Yeah. So the Rassi label is quite a big label. They've got room to put in the details and the, mm -hmm. the, the, that information. But but so I think that we might end up distilling it down to just a simple a simple element of of transparency. But you touched on an interesting kind of historical thing there. We did go pre-war there. We went back to 1915 with Lloyd George, of course. But if we, if I think for the age statement discussion, we've kind of got to keep it probably post-war, and and you said when you said the the range that we had was glorious is the word that you used is that so you came into whiskey weaned on a proliferation of age statement age mm -hmm. stated whiskies right your standard range maybe had a twelve and a fifteen and an eighteen and a twenty one something of that order and that was a core range mm -hmm. and for then anything to appear without an age statement on it would have been striking jarring even mm -hmm. i'm going back to 2005 maybe uh, the turn of the century mm -hmm. right that's that 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 would have been quite jarring and then suddenly as the 2000s tick on what happens Let, well let's talk about why there were so many age stated whiskies in the first place based on the the 80s well so the um uh, the industry was doing very well post war um so the the industry, I think, ex that, expanded. I, I, I've got a good handle on this. You, <laughs> you, you haven't have given you any chance, chance uh, to do it, but right, the, after this, we spiel, we'll give you a chance to go into it, and I'll speak for a wee bit. Uh, so, so, um, sort of to, to the end of the fifties and into the early part of the fifties, there was still a lot of controls on on barley, but at the same time, the the government was was super keen for the Scotch whisky to get going again because it, it brought in hard currency. So there yep. was a big push to expand. So there was new distilleries. There was there was all the existing distilleries were looking at ways of expanding capacity. They were they were trying to get more efficient with you know new strains of barley, new strains of, of yeast, and that grew and grew and grew through the the fifties and sixties, and then in the seventies, um, the 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 shock of the oil crisis um, kind of stalled that things. Starts it. Yeah. That stalled things back, but then they came back from that. But then in, into the eighties, there was a kind of global depression, um, and for brown spirits, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, 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 but also more generally. So that meant that we saw a load of closures in the early eighties, and brown spirits really kind of fell off a cliff. So there was all this whiskey just sitting around. Yep. But the great thing about whiskey sitting around is it just gets older and older and older. And, it's you know, if you've got whiskey in refill barrels, you know, that's the perfect recipe for for um, yes for whiskey that's going to be consumed in its late teens or into its 20s. Whiskey that might have originally been destined for blending Blends. at three yeah. years old, yep. that never happened. So... Instead, it just it just sat there. We had the the whiskey loch. Yep. Um, I mean, it, and you know, in, in wine at the same time, there was the European wine lake and the the butter mountain. <laughs> but <laughs> the way Billy Connolly saying, I think it's terrible. They've got a, a butter mountain and they don't let you slide down it. <laughs> I think um, you've got some old books here as well. Oh, uh, the, the um, yes, yeah, so, and I, and I think when if some of the because of the era of these books, mid sixties. 
and this is in, in the yes. early 80s, that one's mid-60s, yeah. but you, you, there's probably mention in that about this nervousness they had at that time in the 50s and 60s and 70s that leaving whiskey in the cast too long was actually dangerous and could over oak and have a negative effect on the whiskey. It's often written back in this era mm -hmm, that, mm -hmm. that, that you know, some of them beyond 12 or 15 years felt that that was too long in wood. Did I, I read that out to you earlier? No, I can't remember which one it was. Didn't, no, you didn't. I didn't. But, but, but it's, it's something that's always in my mind. I think I put it in an email to you. In, you did, in our exchange, just that, that idea yes. that, 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 that it could be a thing. So, so you know, this is, this is, we have to think about how, how that huge, huge boom of, of what whiskey was experiencing post-war, 50s, 60s, into the 70s, then late 70s, then to the 80s, along with the financial pressures that we had. The fashion thing came in as well, and vodka mm -hmm. and mixed drinks and sparkling wines and all of that yeah. became far more fashionable in the 70s, along with avocado bathroom suites and various other yeah. oddball things. And in the 80s, especially in the, the peak of the closures was 1983, we lost 11 fairly sizable distilleries in one short, very short tight space of time. Um, and the, the, the cull is the, you call it, of the 1980s. But that's just a symptom of what you're talking about, this loch building up this these of age stocks. So this age stocks is costing money for them just to sit on it. Mm -hmm. So what do they do? Their eight-year-old becomes a 12-year-old. They had a 15-year-old. They had an 18-year-old. They, they and they and more importantly, the the marketing becomes about yeah. how older is better. Um, the you know, and, and maybe that's too cynical of me. But you know, like if you've got old whiskey to to get rid of, then you know you're going to say to people, yeah, they, it tastes better than the the young, the young stuff. Absolutely. I mean, maybe. Maybe that is too cynical, uh, but you know the. I mean, we. But that was the education that fueled a lot of the anti-non-age statement that happened mm -hmm, post millennium. Mm -hmm. That it was the industry almost having to do a one hundred and eighty degree degree turn on what they'd been sharing, what mm -hmm, they'd been selling, mm -hmm. what they'd been telling us. Um, I'm not suggesting that it's terrible what the industry did, or it's just a. It's well, just it was a, a response to circumstances. It's just you know, absolutely they, circumstantial. Yeah. You know, they they have a business to run. They need to to keep going. So yeah. You know, they have to find ways of selling their whiskey. Well, um, I'm going to let you have a wee go on this because I've got a very. I, I'm, I'm I'm committed to this, Sarah. I am just going to blurt out what I think what we're sipping here, uh, not fully knowing that I'm I'm wrong, but nevertheless I'm going to go with it. Um. And I'll grab some of the comments here while Roddy's having a wee think. Dominic Fife is saying, mm -hmm. when I got hooked on Buna 12 in the mid-1990s, it was said to be mostly 17 years old. Mm -hmm. Ooh, be interested, 1990s probably. Overaging was a very, very common practice. And by overaging, you know, there would be potentially 12 years old in your Buna, but they were generously using older stock in order to fortify and lift um, the quality of their spirit. Uh, absolutely, it still happens today, but far, far less regularly for very obvious reasons. And Jim M is saying, really enjoying the discussion. I'm going to have to pick up the rest later. Jim, nice of you to drop in, buddy. I always, it's always a, a pleasure, and I appreciate you picking it up on the replay too. Pete Head is saying, when you want to get rid of old whiskey, just focus on the fact that it's way less available than young stuff, and so play on curiosity. We've been yeah. talking about how, you know, we can't. We're human, and we just. Uh, Roddy and I can I tell a tale out of school. What we had drank before we went live tonight. Thanks. Roddy poured a 59-year-old Bass Armagnac for us. A 59-year-old thing. You know, if we're going to talk about age tonight, it's like, try, try this, what are you thinking? Things. We were enjoying that before we went live. And it's this kind of human thing where you, um, you're you getting to enjoy a product that's older than you are. Do the camera thing. Yeah, sure. Don't just, 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 you hold it up, Nick. Uh, if it, it will, there we go. Uh, a 1962, uh, I don't know how to pronounce that. Is it Darrow? Darrow's. 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 Yeah. Darrow's? Yeah. 42.5% uh, ABV, very classy, stylish bottle, and a gorgeous, gorgeous russet brown colour. But we decided not to, well, we, we've ended up talking about it anyway, but it's it's kind of a. A tangent, to but the... it's the romanticism, as is, is yes. Falsgraf right. is saying. It's that idea that this this was made, <laughs> distilled in 1962. 
on yeah. vines that were probably planted goodness knows when. I mean, it, it's just 40s at least. Yeah, it, it's incredible just to kind of sip that liquid and just know that you're imbibing molecules of history yes. and you can just kind of consider that. And whiskey does that for me, whether I'm sipping a 10 year old or a 20 year old. But of course, the older it gets, the more of an effect that has. Uh, absolutely, Falsgraf, I agree with you. Um, Ian Bruce is saying, uh, having a current wasted, uh, sorry, vested interest, you're too far away from me tonight, a current uh, vested interest in Aussie whiskies, I am right in thinking a lot of their bottles are non age dated. These would be younger due to the maturation times. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Interestingly, I think we are, this is tropical, right? I think there is a kind of sherry cast vibe from this. This is me, I'll let you speak to, but I, this, I think this is non Scotch. I'll go well, further. That, that hadn't occurred to me. Um, I'll go further. I think it's Indian. I mean, it would be very like Sarah to throw an absolute curveball. Like and that. I think it might even be the Indri triple wood. I think they called it a triple wood or a three wood or something, a triple wood or something. Um, but I rinsed, maniacally rinsed, because it was 40, 42 pounds or something a bottle. <laughs> and it was it was tasted like this. In my memory, I, I, Sarah, I'm completely wrong. So the, I don't know how old is that whiskey then. Well, I mean to come back to the topic, but is it old? old yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. So I, I think this is young whiskey because it's got that bite to it. Do you know that like young whiskey? Yeah. Even in it, when it's in a very active cast, there's always a week in a not a grippiness to it, but there's a there's a little slight jagginess to it. You know, you feel you feel that it's kind of biting back at your tongue. Slightly. Yeah. I know exactly what you mean. It's just, it's an, it's like, it's, if you, you can almost visualize it. So there is a gloopiness, there's a thick, easy smoothness to this. This mm -hmm. is a good, rich whiskey, yeah. but there's a jagged edge. There's a bit of friction in here. Um, I don't, a I bit don't, of life. I, it never occurred to me to say it wasn't Scotch, though. I would just say it's. But it's so Scotch alike. It's the tropical, it's, there's also a slight funk here. Right. I, I don't know if you're getting it. It's like a quiet, no, no, I, I, I want to say farmyard, but I'm going to say zoo. Zoo. <laughs> it's like, there's a there's a kind of a zoo. Uh, it's difficult to to. It is. It's farm and, and uh, stewed fruit. But there's yeah. a bit of funk. A bit of wet tobacco. I'll give you tobacco for sure. Yeah. yeah. But it's all kind of leaning towards the mulchy end of things that's making me go towards a zoo, if that makes sense. So maybe, maybe like peaches that have been left too long. It's a tropical thing. Yeah, I was, I was yeah. there's definitely a tropical note to this, right? But do you know what I mean about the, like I, I, for me, it's like funk. It's not funk in a farmyardy sense for me. It's more like funk of something that's overripe. Yeah. So for me, uh, it's plain as mulchy. And for you, it's that the overripe fruits, absolutely. So I that's, I guess, that's going to be that. That's going to be a fermentation note. You know, the, the the tropical fruit, and then the bite from active wood and youth. Youth, yep. I still think it's Scotch, though. Okay. Shall we? He's, oh, always, uh, he's always right. <laughs> so, so what, the thing is, is the first thing is, do we like it? Yes. What age uh, would you suggest? I'm saying this is four years old. Four to five years old, mm. non age statement. I'm going to double that and say eight. eight an eight year old Scotch, yeah. I think. Okay. Um, also, we forgot to say that Sarah uh, was emphatic that uh, the game that we like to, that I like to play uh, on the VPUB is, is it a space side? Um, mm. So we've got a new game starting tonight, which is called Gauge the Age. Brilliant. Gauge the that's, Age. And that's, that's Sarah's. A lot of you <laughs> might remember it was Roddy and I that. Inadvertently started the is it a space age way back when, but now we've got gauge the age. So Sarah this is when I cringe and say, <laughs> and the mystery dram is, and she's oh, I can never get the focus to work. Oh, there we there go. You go. Hey, oh, I thought that was it. No, no, it's um, there's, there's drama involved here. Uh, okay, so the mystery dram is a <laughs> oh dear. <laughs> nope, we will just put that off to the side. <laughs> Nothing more to say. 
even if we add up our guesses, we're only halfway to the age of this whiskey. Let's move on. What's the chat saying? <laughs> <laughs> right, come on. We need to. So Sarah oh, poured for us. <laughs> I've just been very complimentary to to that Indian whiskey, which was very very good. Hmm? Do you know what? See now that I'm nosing. <laughs> oh, get away. We are sipping a 21 year old Scotch. At forty three percent from Ben Romack. <laughs> That's quite embarrassing. Do you know how confident I was that that was Indian whiskey? <laughs> so confident. Ben Romack, twenty one year old. So confident. I still like it. I still implore people to go out and try that entry. It's a. Yeah. So did you have you get to try that entry at Indian whiskey? No. Uh, I don't think so. No. Uh, I'd offer you a dram, but it's rinsed. It's the fact the empty bottle is there. Look. One with a kind of fancy. Oh yes, right. Um, terrific <sighs> stuff. Anyway, that, was, that was very embarrassing. No, Roddy wins because you at least guessed that it's Scotch, and you got closer on age. I'm suggesting it was young. We both, we both, despite it being forty three percent, we both got that kind of jagged edge to it. That 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 vibrance. That I don't know where the jagginess comes from then, because like you know the we were. That, but the mulchy funk is definitely a Ben Romack trait. Yeah, that 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 fits in. But you know, we were our warm up dram was the uh, Tinnanich, mm -hmm. which that's also forty three percent, isn't it? Yes, absolutely. Yeah. So, hmm, well, don't know. I'll I'll jump into the chat and I'll I'll suggest that you can uh, you can start at, at any direction you want to start at. Uh, I would suggest maybe you know I don't I don't want to lead you because that would suggest that I'm going to be moving you towards the older age statement maybe or the higher ABV or something so I'll just let you kind of nose through and you can and I'll jump in and see uh, I'll, I'll take some of the bullets that we're going to get from the crowd okay <laughs> that's quite embarrassing really just come on, that's it. I don't I whiskey has taught me that embarrassment you know it's just it's water off a duck's back I, now. I don't even care anymore yeah and, and the thing is the community tend to look at it and go Firstly, they feel like it's accessible because, you know, if, if these people that have been drinking whiskey for years and years, some people standing up on YouTube shouting about it weekly, right? If they can get it that badly wrong, then it's, come on, I, I can play this game. Yeah. And I think that that's an important element of it. And also, whiskey will continually find ways of taking your trousers down. Yes. There will be times that you will get it right and the people that, you, that you're sitting with will be so impressed. I was at a dinner recently and somebody brought, brought me a dram at the dinner and said, here, what do you think of that? And I went, I think it's probably any 12. And he nearly fainted. He was just like so, because it was genuinely a Bovenny that, that he brought me. And he said, that's amazing. You know, it's, uh, that's, that's incredible. He said, wow. And I said, look, even a broken clock, right? Aye. That's right, twice a day. The idea that, so I'm interrog interrogating that with the best intentions, the best. And that reminds me vividly, the funk, the the fruit the tropical side of it reminded me vividly of that Indian Indian whiskey. Mm -hmm, so mm -hmm. let's go with it. Danny is saying, hey, "Does that mean Gage the age will be scrapped?" <laughs> no, <laughs> we, we need to power through, Mike. We need to. Sorry, Danny. We need to keep doing it. We need to keep doing it. Age the age. Whiskey weekend drama is saying full of uh, flavors. Forty three percent is very weird indeed, but packed with it and good mouthfeel. Also, listen, Ben Romick's always been like that. They've recently been bringing out their contrast series at forty six percent. Uh, they've also got their cast strength as well. We love the spirit. We love the liquid. Um, those of us of a geeky nature are constantly complaining or, or whinging that, come on, just give us that few extra points percent so that you don't need to fill everything. Um, but it's still a delicious whiskey. Jimmy Legg is saying, oh, dear, a Jimmy comment now. On. Let's put the armour on, Roy. If I ever think a Ben Romick isn't Scotch whiskey, you, you can spank me. <laughs> Ryan Sutherland is saying, short-term cask finish. Not sure what the maturation is on it, but sometimes you can mock up the balance pulling it out. So Ryan Sutherland... Yeah, Ryan's was, he's thrown us a, 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 a life belt, isn't he? By saying... But the reason you got you might have got that wrong. But but he's also uh, making whiskey up at eight doors. Right. So uh, so he knows he's thinking about things from that perspective mm -hmm. as well, is that uh, not sure what the maturation is, but sometimes can mock up balance by pulling it out of a refill at... The age for a finish, jaggy, jaggy, hot, hot. It wasn't. It wasn't jaggy, jaggy, hot, hot. I think it was just a wee bit of of saw teeth sticking out. And the spiky. Aye, mm -hmm. just this, 
it's a wee edge of a wee bit of grip that's all hoagie bear is in from germany hoagie so good to see you i hope you're doing very well and he's saying uh, do you also uh, instinctively think uh, by yourself of a whiskey to be rather young if if you read distilled in 2000 and x on the label that's crazy if you see like oh distilled 2009 you think oh, no, a baby i think are you because you, you're in retail maybe you're seeing it all the time you're conditioned much more but i know exactly what Hogan's talking about he's talking about this 2000 and something so it suddenly seems very young but actually 2009 is a 14 year old mm. not whiskey right yeah what were you pointing at there graham young uh, Roddy and Roy. graham that i was talking to in the shop she's my friends from ardemarkin restaurant in glasgow Aye, you're in town aren't you graham uh, i hope that you're well i hope claudette's well i hope everybody's doing good and you're having a nice time i know that you're trying to uh, evangelize whiskey to your to your drinking buddies and graham young has actually bought us a drink to say cheers and thanks for the recommendations for some lovely blends yesterday roddy <laughs> cheers hey i get the drum for your recommendations <laughs> cheers to that <laughs> cheers cheers graham it's good to see you oh what do we have here so i, I, I don't know how to do this i don't know um, I, so I, i've been kind of going between the three of them so i'm gonna i'm gonna say based on nosing them i've not tasted any yet is that the middle one is it seems a lot younger than the other two okay um it's or do i mean that right i tell you to tell you what we're going to do uh, if, it's just if you if you just look away i am going to help people i'm going to show people what you're sipping okay is that okay mm -hmm. and do you it's, want me to it's go just going to be much more interactive no no just look at look just stand in the corner. I'll stand in the corner. No, no, I'll just, just that's fine. That's fine. And I'll hold up the drums. I'll I'll say I'll say the old one is this one. And you I know that you're gonna to want to know uh, what glass that's in. So I'll say I'll I'll hold this up and say there we go. Then this one is <laughs> Is this? And finally, uh, the one that looks like this, I can't say too much, is this. <laughs> Sorry, buddy, thanks for indulging that. It's going to be harder for, for, for folks, for you to do that for the folks. Uh, Roddy's drinking three and I'm drinking two. And the reason for that is that uh, Sarah's was going to be the third dram. Uh, but I forgot. So you poured me three and anyway. Still poured you I three get a anyway. bonus dram. So you get a bonus dram. He gets a bonus dram. But I'm I'm sipping two. That means I need to not look at the chat now, or else I would. Well, you can, you can look at the chat <sighs> if you get any clues. That's fine. But uh, so the, Roddy's the, standing by a mirror. Okay. <laughs> the um, this the one with the yellow dot, the middle one, which I think. Initially, I was thinking it's young, but then it's, it smells, it's like that really active fresh oak that smells like a sauna. Well, what's nuts about the one with the yellow dot that I've only just noticed when I was sharing it with the folk watching tonight, I have completely poured you the wrong whiskey. I picked the bottle up because it looks a lot like the bottle that I intended to pour, and I poured it, but we're just going to go with it. We're going to stick with it. And, okay. then, and then the one I was going to pour you we can pour a wee bit later I'm but very confused it yeah it doesn't matter the reason that that happened is because of i said to roddy before we went live tonight that when he's here i just it's almost like a night off for me <laughs> and i'm not as, i'm not as focused in on the ball and i've clearly poured the wrong drop so the wheels are falling off quite early but i think it's still relevant we'll go with it we'll see how it works don't believe a word that jimmy legger men will say ever says luna Aaron. so you make your people just you can't trust anything no, that's okay, going to get right. thrown at you from the chat, right? So the I see that Jimmy Legg has got a comment there about asking if saunas are built of oak, but and I, I guess they're Cedar. yeah, but but there is a there is a, a an aroma or even a flavour that you get from some whiskies, which is really like sauna. Yeah, um, and it's I know exactly what you mean. And yeah. I you know it is like a cedary but it's wet as well i think the aroma is, yeah. is 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 a wee bit aromatic a wee bit wet yeah a wee it's, bit it's kind of lifted yeah. aromatic yeah. spicy note yeah it's the spice side of of, of um 
I think it's fresh oak, whatever it is, that, that it provokes it. Hoagie's asking about whiskey fairs. The whiskey fair season is about to begin in Berlin with two upcoming events in May about Glasgow and Edinburgh. Anything on the horizon? Yeah, the Glasgow Whiskey Festival in November. Hey, Hoagie, you have to come. I mean, come for the festival, of course, but it's all about the people and the camaraderie and the, just mm. the community, the sense of, of, of it all. The, but see this 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 drum that I'm comparing to Asona, this this reminds me to come back to the thread. This is the yellow dot drum yeah. that you think is the young youngest. whiskey. Yeah. yeah. This brings me back to what I was talking about earlier, where I was talking about the the older whiskies, the bit the you know, the the, the impressive age statement whiskies that, that were more prevalent in the nineties and early two thousands that were in refill wood this is this is the contra to that the the opposite this is this to me tastes Young a lot like active wood yeah yeah you, yep. you know so the, the it's that thing where the distiller has made the conscious decision to use active wood so that they know that they can, can have any notes? yeah yeah they, they can release the whiskey at three four five years old oh, it does smell like a sauna the it does smell like a sauna it really does um yeah I mean, I like that, you know, if, I mean, cedar is a good comparison, you know, what you were saying, and I, I love the smell of cedar. Um, I'm not sure that saunas are made of cedar, but that, but the, that, that wooden, that scent, that kind of, that, that, that almost, yeah, I, that I, lovely I, cedar wood aromatic kind of. Can somebody tell us what saunas are made from? I think they're just, I don't know, is probably it, what, they, what they treat the wood with rather than the, what the wood is. is are they not untreated wood? Is it? Does it not have to be untreated wood? Well, it might. It's maybe, is it? Pine or something? Oh, I don't think it's pine because that's such a pin, uh, pungent kind of. See if we see if we don't know our way around a glass of whiskey and we don't know anything about saunas. <laughs> why are we even here? Because <laughs> we're going to talk about fishing. Yeah. Mm. You know? We're going to spend the next two hours talking about fishing. Yeah, you tie flies for different rivers and things, <laughs> don't you? Okay, I, my my instinct of the two drams I'm only comparing two here is that we have. Kind of a wee bit what you're talking about here. I think the one on the left, the darker one, counterintuitively, is coming across a wee bit younger. But this one on the right, this is right up my street. This you like it? Oh, why? This is like a lovely. It's it's it is sweet, but it's not sickly sweet. It's sweet, perfumed, fruity, like a fruity Highlander. I think that's what the distillery would uh, themselves. But there's a lovely, and I'm looking for it on the glass. It's there on the glass. It's quite a. If you get some of this for yourself, um, it's I'm quite a, a. I can do. There's, a, there's an oiliness to it. There's a lovely oiliness to it. A lovely weight. And I feel like this is. There's a good age to this, but the cask is quiet, super quiet. Listen, I've just declared a 21-year-old Ben Roma as a four-year-old <laughs> Indian whiskey. Uh, so, you know, the, 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 can the, it can't get any worse from there. So I, I, th I think the, I mean, you know, that this is, you know, kind of very much a bit of special pleading or like, you know, justifying what we said after the fact. But there's, there's so many different ways that you can arrive at a bottle of whiskey, you know, uh, even if it's a single cask whiskey, you know, obviously if, if it's a batch product like the Benoma 21 year old, uh, um, as was suggested in the chat, it's, it's possible that you might, you might have pulled out the whiskies that are going to go into a batch of a particular product and finished them in something. And then it's, it's not impossible to, at that point, introduce the jagginess. Um, but even if you've got a single cask whiskey and it's not a finish, there's still so many paths to follow. You know, there's the different kinds of oak. There's the, um, the the filling strength that goes into the barrel, which affects what gets extracted from the wood. Yeah. And then there, there's whether you choose virgin oak, first fill, refill, or if you're, you know, the fifth refill, a plain cask. Yeah. Yeah. The so the you know you've got these multiplicity of paths to arrive at the the, the final, final product. product yeah so the um you, you know it, it, it's i don't know where i'm going with this Roy. i think it's just that that um 
Well, I mean, uh, I think what you're you're talking about again is what we started with, and that's complexity. There's just the amount of different ways that you've got about getting to a, a, a final. I mean, if you go to a distillery like Loch Lomond, the complexity is difficult to get your head around. Right. Okay, it's re- yes. it's easy to tie yourself up in knots just trying to um, to try and you know to equate their products to their production. But then I found myself in a tiny little distillery two weeks ago in the Isle of Rassie. And they have managed to, through their, uh, through every block in their process, they've been able to add in a, a differentiator, a different barley, a, a different uh, fermentation time. Then they get to the still, and they've, on the wash still, they've got a cooling jacket on the line arm. Uh, and then on the spirit still, they've got uh, the ability to divert the vapours through what is essentially a straight-necked still that sit, the straight neck sits off to the side so that so before it's even touched wood mm-hmm. before it's even gone into maturing all the various woods that you talked about being on the labeling they've got multiple different spirit styles all adding in complexity what we are talking about here is often a completely different super complex tangent altogether where yeah we are just talking about the the aging process once, right? once it's once it's exited the, the still house yeah and you know that you just running through that the, the process at Rassi kind of reminds me that that um, you know the whole focus on aging maybe that's that's too much of a focus. You know we need to think about the other stages. I mean I guess you know if you've got a whiskey loch during the nineties, then you you overemphasize age because it's a way to help you sell your whiskey. Um, but then. But you define you know. a culture around whiskey based on that messaging, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and you you teach them that older is better, mm-hmm. and then you find yourselves when the stocks are no longer there. The, it's well written that the whiskey loch, loch, sorry, is now a whiskey puddle, and that those and even what is available in those little puddles are are not for us to easily afford anymore. Mm. Uh, you know, for the majority of us, right? So. So we, we, the industry has almost got to kind of reteach us all over again that actually young whiskey, but it's not the same players that was teaching us the old whiskey. It's a different group mm-hmm. of people that are in there now shit saying, well, we have to sell you young whiskey, but we won't always be sell, selling you young whiskey. Mm-hmm. But, right, but, but right now we, we've got this. I think um, when, when you were a... When I was nosing these, and you were you were talking uh, about that transition from the then to now, something that we didn't talk about uh, in the, in the run up to this, but which is maybe significant, is that in the early two thousands, um, uh, we had Brucladi just reopened and had an enormous pressure to. You know, they were so yeah. strapped for cash that they had to go very, very creative in many different ways. So so we saw them introducing, I mean, uh, you know, there were great old whiskies. There was the XVII um, um, and other old whiskies, but they also had lots of young whiskey. But then the other big player w- was um, Ardbeg on, you know, the, that similar time, yeah. that, that journey on the way back to um, a 10 year old. Yep. you know there was the 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 art big very young still young still young not uh, there yet. Not, yeah, yeah yeah i can't remember what they were then it was renaissance and and that you know that yeah. that you know art big obviously all the while they were selling a 17 year old is that yes, right, right. Art big 17 um, um but the, you know the art big one of the big players they were making us comfortable with the idea of drinking younger young whiskey you know we knew it was five and six and seven and eight and it tasted great as well yep the, so the but the transparency that t word's going to keep coming up right. of that campaign was alluring mm-hmm. endearing even yes because right. you, you could buy into what they're they're trying to do they were making it clear what they were trying to mm-hmm. do mm-hmm. and all the while offering you a 17 year old which at the time was not an expensive no, it wasn't it became if you want to buy it now it's expensive mm-hmm. um but so so the that was happening. Brook Laddie's going through the same, the same thing. I remember the Brook Laddie 21 year old. Had, uh, 
I mean, it was the XVII, the 17, that, that kind of sticks in my mind. As well, the, 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 the reason it was 21 year old is because I was there in, in, for, for Fischio 2010, and one of my best pals drank our collective kitty from the 10 of us, drinking 21 year old Brick Laddie over the bar at the Belmore Hotel. <laughs> And uh, and he drank so much of it that you know, at one point I passed him by and I said, "What's that you're drinking?" And I, and I noticed it and I went, "Oh, that smells like Brook Laddie 21." And he went, oh. <laughs> "Not knowing that I've he, he's been sitting there all night and he's been every time he, I passed him he was drinking another Brook Laddie 21." But of course, you, you know that that was they were able to leverage the sales of their old stocks. Mm -hmm. What Brook Laddies had to do now, now Beg are doing the same thing. They've got a wee beast at five years old. Brook Laddie's classic laddie. There's been an, a 10 year old, an eight, an eight year old, but now it's an on age statement. Their classic laddie remains 50% ABV, all natural. A great product and people love it, but it remains an on age statement. They've mm -hmm. had to go through a process to teach their customer base that non age statement can be okay. Mm -hmm. They have succeeded. And I'm going to theorize with you that they have succeeded through the T word through transparency. Mm -hmm. They have, they've brought us along the journey. Uh, they've, if you want to put in a code in the website, for years you could detect exactly what was making up your different uh, batches of Brick Laddie product. Uh, I believe that there's been some kind of redaction there now. There's certain things that they've blacked out. And I just heard this week, it's not something I've experienced. Maybe SWA interference, I don't know. But essentially they've brought us along and they've reassured us that their classic Laddie can still be a very enjoyable, vibrant mm -hmm. and, and tasty product despite the fact we now know it to be probably seven or eight years old mm -hmm. of that mm -hmm. order, at best. We, we're in a situation now where the stocks that exist in Scotland, 22 million casks and counting, maturing whiskey on our shores. I, I don't know what the average age of that would be, but I'm going to suggest that it's younger than 15 years, considerably <laughs> younger than 15 years, um, younger than 10, maybe into the single digits. But that doesn't remain static. That's maturing every single day, every single month, every year. That's getting older and older and older. And mm -hmm. there's new fresh stocks coming in to shore it up, of course. I, I am worried that what we have today is this contrast between age, this perception of age statements because of what the industry taught us pre-2000, let's say. And then post-2000, what's almost had to be undone with the new distilleries mm -hmm. and the younger stock from the incumbents coming through, we don't have the whiskey lock to lean on anymore, that suddenly we've got this really quite, this oddball scenario where we need to relax in order to untangle that mess. We need to relax a little bit about age statement and go with, as I admitted to you earlier, the post-purchase markers right yeah. of quality of flavor of you know you know just experience with, with the glass but if we do relax what we do is we protect ourselves a little bit because if we decide that age statement is king we every year that goes by we are going to need to pay exponentially more for our 15 18 year old 21 mm -hmm. year old product based on what's happening right now and based on the, the amount of people that seem to exist out there in the world that's willing to pay ridiculous sums of money, Macallan 18 is £495 a bottle now. Talisker has just shifted their prices up in the last year from 80 to 175 for their 18-year-old. That's going in a similar direction. There are producers out there following that kind of positioning strategy. So I'm a wee bit worried that we follow that and have to pay too much or then feel really disappointed and feel like that we're almost sipping the poorer sibling in order to enjoy the whiskies that's out there now. I would like to start now to try and adjust now based on what's available and what's coming over the horizon. Not the brand rec the, not the recognized brands that's able to cash in on their 18 year old, but the ones that are building their brand now. And the only way they can build a brand is through bringing us the best possible whiskey that they can. I think this is the paler one is the older one. I'm just, if I'm wrong, I'll I'll leave the rest of the stream to you, <laughs> and the VPUB will have a new shape from here on. And, and I feel like this one is I don't know if it's a finish or maturation, but this one feels fractured. This is a whiskey that's struggling a wee bit with itself. Mm -hmm. 
the I'm enjoying it, but it's 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 that jaggy thing is there. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. There's a there's there's sherry here. Is this sherry matured? This yes. One? More importantly, is it a space aid? No, that's not what we're playing tonight. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I, I yeah. think that this this comes across as like a young, maybe a young indie, maybe a new distillery. Sit, sit single digit age statement in this one, but using sherry cast to kind of, and it does it it does it quite well. But it's still it's it's youthful. It's still tasty whiskey. This is like an elegant thing. This is all fruit and cream and oils. This is the one that you're going to sit with on the couch for ages, and and this one is kind of going to make you. It's going to shout for your attention uh, every every sip. Okay, that's my summary. You've got three to summarise here. Quite really, quite different whiskies. Right. So the um, the the one in the SMWS glass, that that, that I think that's the oldest. Okay. Um, it's lovely. Okay. Um, it seems like a mellow teenage whiskey. Okay. Um, cherry cask, not smoky. Um, the middle one with the yellow dot. That's I'm, I'm really. This is the sauna whiskey. Yes. You know that really active, cedary, spicy kind of oak. I like that too. You know, it, it, it's a. You know that would be the dram. I'm smelling it from here. Can, can yeah. you? Aye, aye. Yeah. The, the, this the, the SMWS class, the left hand one. That would be sitting down just reading a book or something you know and just having a sip and making the whole thing last an hour and just a decadent it... thing right? yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. Th this one smells like a good party whiskey you know you you're having your you know you're you're with your mates you're maybe having a pint along with it and yep. be because it's that brash oak it will stand up to the pint yep you got you um and then this smoky one um don't know Also lovely, you know. That's that's a really good Wednesday night whiskey. You know, it's like I need a Kalila Twelve. This will or, help the community pinpoint what you've got in your right hand there. I can't keep my hands off it. It's got this treacle side to it. Treacle. Ah, uh -huh. this treacly. It reminds me of it's it's, it's a really full bodied, shouty, bold, but remarkably. I love that saltiness. Saltiness. I, I want to have a glass alongside with you. Mm. But I can't. I'll, I'll wait a wee minute. Put a mm. wee nip in there. Go. That's not. It's a clean glass for the ten-year-old, isn't it? Do you want it? But, ah, there's plenty of clean glasses. Yeah. Put a wee bit in there. Go. Salty, you say. Salty, you say. Well, perhaps it's in contrast with the other two. Yeah. You know, yeah. The... Well, it should work here too. I think. Aye. It should do. Of course it's salty. Of course it is. I'm looking for salt. Excuse me. You say there's salt. It's going to put salt in it. But, you know, if you're tasting this alongside two whiskies that are only PT, you know, and it's then that emphasises it, doesn't it? And the, I, I love that thing about, you know, that d debate about, you know, there's no salt in whiskey. You know, I know that people will say, well, if the casks sit on the coast then there might be a little bit of salt but essentially no. there's no salt in whiskey yeah so there's some there's some magic i know i know this is not tonight's topic but there's some kind of magic trick that ha happens where peat is applied to the barley and then three seven ten years down the line we perceive it as saltiness you know I, there's some, know I think there's something else going on as well because it doesn't always need peat for me to pick up a saltiness in a whiskey and I don't think what I often I don't think what we're tasting is salt. I think we're just tasting a notion of it's sodium, right? It's, and there's no way that those there's no way that salt can pass through a cask from the atmosphere into the liquid. Okay, as the as the thing's maturing, mm -hmm. but that doesn't necessarily imagine that there's a lot the water that's been used to reduce the whiskey, something in the process, whatever it is. There's something that's kind of it's, it's a mystery. Su at some point. Uh, and if you start to tell people that if they taste a saltiness in a whiskey, they're wrong, that, that's one of those things. No, I, I, would, I would never do that. That's so right. I, just, that's I, right. I, you I can't think, strip any vocabulary can, away from can, anyone. You can right? say that if you do a, a 
uh, chemical analysis, you're not going to find sodium chloride. But you're not going to find but, tree bark. I know, oh, I know. Or you're not going to find... It's one of these really entertaining things about, about peated whiskies, that the, the peat manifests as, as earthy peat or as, you know, sweet wood smoke or, as with this drum, uh, you know, saltiness. Yeah. You, so you, you, you're enjoying all the drams? Aye. There's, there's clearly I think, no... I think... Oh, wow, what a difference on that. Middle one is the youngest. Left-hand one is the oldest, and this one... So, under 10... Late teens, standard ten or twelve year old. Standard Eight. ten or twelve. Super Eight. interesting. Um, I I am going to go with that's the salty. Adam. I'm going to go with the pale one being the old, uh, in in this comparison, and the sherry cask one being young. You're looking shifty. Have we got that wrong again? That's fine. <laughs> let let me tell you that you're absolutely right. You're absolutely right. <sighs> That's a broken clock. <laughs> <laughs> this is young. This is older. Somewhat older. And this is in in between the in two. Between. But I'm not entirely sure. I can't be sure because I poured the wrong one here, but I think it's... And we'll get to that in a second. I think you're absolutely right. Is this uh, a young whiskey playing old? Um. So that one is uh -huh. is twice the age of that one. Um, that one and and the, and if you'd have you done that on purpose because you thought that uh, I like I told you Roy that I was having I was no you know, intention I, to bamboozle I no no I was, I was I was dithering for so long I, I, I had different things pulled out and I ended up going with these two partly um, well so the younger whiskey I brought for um, right. Propaganda purposes. Okay, good. Um, I don't mind a wee bit of propaganda. Um, especially if I can use it as an excuse to wriggle out of the... Because the oh, younger wow. whiskey is... Uh, is that peated? No. It's a Brackla. Well, now which we is, as we know, the best distillery in the whole of Scotland. <laughs> <laughs> Says three people on the planet and they all belong to the same club, right? Um... So this is James E.D., small batch Brackler, nine-year-old. So a it's a nine-year-old whiskey. Yeah, so it's a vatting of three casks. Um, and the wood is first full bourbon and recharred hogshead. Um, and it's bottled at 46%. So two rechars and one first fill or, or the yeah, other way around. Aye, so, so somewhat active wood, at least. Um, but I, I brought this whiskey a because Brackla is the bee's knees, <laughs> but also because I, I, I am enjoying it tonight. I yes. think I think this is a um, it's I would call this a young Brackla, you know. Like I obviously the the the, the Royal Brackla Appreciation Society. We do drink a lot of Brackla, and this is this is to be honest not what we're looking for. This is not the kind of uh, of this the, is not this is not the holy grail that, that we're always there's no for. hairspray on this <laughs> there, there there's not any hairspray the the to, for context um the 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 real holy grail with with Brackla is is hairspray toffee pennies and a herbal note um, and this one has just got really the toffee pennies the sweetness the richness yeah you know it's like it's like a creamy toffee kind of you know that mouth coating thing that you're talking yep. about is there, and that's the creaminess, but and it's like a cream lined toffee. Um, so to me, the, this although this is nine years old, which by today's uh, standards is a reasonable kind of age statement in terms of the distillery. For me, that's on the young end of Brackla. Yes, that's sure. If you see what yep. I mean. Um, so that's your young one. Yeah, even though it's not and all that young. So this is then an 18 year old. Eh, well, it's actually 20. Um, 20 years so, old. So, yeah, yeah, more or less double the age of that. This is, I don't have the bottle anymore because I, I preserved the sample. So, this is another indie, Ben Nevis. Uh, it's a Ben Nevis. Um, how do we get this to focus, Roy? So, I mean, it's just to see Roddy's writing there. So, a, a Ben Nevis. Very brilliant. 1997, 2018. I've got a friend in Germany, Stefan Novak, who 
if we require water tonight, it's it's his gift that we're using to pour the water. Let me show you how well this wee thing works. I'm going to put a wee bit of water in your bit right. nervous to see if that helps me at all. This is it's a wee. I think it's a wee olive oil thing, but it's just a remarkably uh, handy and easy little sealed thing to pour just a wee drop of water in. Oh, so clearly Ben Nevis. <laughs> <laughs> so the I have to say that Ben Nevis went through my head when when I was. Uh, of course, I'm going to say that now, but just the kind of we believe you, Roy. Uh, look, it just it, we believe him, don't we? There's a there's a style to Ben Nevis, and it can be jarring and it can be difficult and clunky sometimes. Ben Nevis, mm -hmm. that it makes sense that it's Ben Nevis. It doesn't make sense that it's a twenty year old Ben Nevis. Do you think this plays like a 20-year-old whiskey? I think this is an underactive cask. And again, this is why I ended up bringing this. Like, So I worked my way through the bottle and I uh, you know, discussed it with other people over a dram. And I enjoyed it. You know, this, this, I saved this um, so that I finished the bottle about a year ago. And I, 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 as I'm sure many of you do, I saved the last uh, 10CL so that I could revisit it. My memory of drinking that whiskey was that all the way down, I was thinking, "This is this doesn't taste like a twenty-year-old." And that you I, felt it was younger. I, I well, no, I I knew the age. I, I wasn't tasting it blind. You know, I wasn't having to gauge the age, um, gauge uh, the age. Gauge yeah. the age. But th this was the the reason for bringing this one was to to come back to one of the points I've tried to touch on already, which is that the age statement. You have to you you have to interpret it. You know, like the the on on the label, it's a twenty year old, but it's been in what I think is less active wood than is average for a for a twenty year old. I mean, I know that's kind of well. Doesn't... That makes me feel a hell of a lot better because what what I think what you've what you've done, if you don't mind me. Uh, suggesting that as such, I just want to make sure that's gone. Uh, so I've just sent a wee email over to uh, my friend from Belgium here who's saying, so Roddy did slip in a banana skin for you. I don't think it's a banana skin. I think what you've done is you've tried to, because I think that genuinely the Brackla is young but plays older than it than it should. And the Ben Nevis is a good age statement at 20 years old. But but it doesn't but taste it like it. Young, and younger. That, it was, so so that, that makes me feel a whole lot better. You know, I was there was but, there was rhetoric to be to be deployed there. I wanted to kind of make the point that you know age is more than just a number. You know, you look at the number on the bottle, and it doesn't necessarily guarantee that that that, that, that well. If we've talked about third and fourth and fifth fill wood, twenty years in old wood, it's probably going to make a good whiskey, but it's not going to make a, a very active or mm -hmm. it's not going to a flavour. Whereas five years in very active wood, mm -hmm. I mean, I think that's almost what you've tried to demonstrate here a wee bit. Um, there, there was sherry on this. It was quite obviously sherry. Yeah, it's, it's a sherry butt here. Um, but this is the style and profile cast. of whiskey that I would expect from a teenager, mm -hmm. a mature teenager, and refill cask from a Highland or a Speyside distillery that's, that's good quality spirit. It's oily and thick. It's got a good mm -hmm. body to it. This is a good sipping, drinking whiskey. And... Um, I thought that you would maybe think that I would fall foul of the fact that because it was pale and I wouldn't think that there was much age on it, so I'm second guessing a little bit. For, well, I wasn't trying to second guess. No, no, sure. Roy, I was just, whereas, uh, whereas this one is darker, yeah. clearly sherried, but it, but it was much more jagged and much more raw. I mean, I guess that that's, you know, the younger one's 46 and that is, you know, the 54. So yeah, yeah, yeah. There is that. Well, I'll, I'll tell you what. I'll tell you what's what you're sipping. Mm -hmm. I'll, I'll tell you what the the yellow is first, and the 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 mistake I made pouring it. I just as we were chatting, I grabbed it by mistake, but it still still stands. This is brimstone from Balcones. So this is a Texas whiskey, fifty three percent ABV. Now I was looking for an age on this one, and it, it doesn't actually tell us the age. But what I actually wanted to pour for Roddy, do you see that other Balcones there? It's just a single back. malt. Uh -huh. Grab that and I'll show you the... Well, I, I, in fact, I won't. What I'm going to do is pour you a teaspoon of it. If, yeah, just be careful as you... Yep. Grab a clean glass, my friend, and mm -hmm. from the stash. I, th 
think they're similarly aged. The Texas climate obviously means that they, they have to be super careful or they have to air condition their warehouses. <laughs> um, but I mean, a bit more tablespoon rather than a teaspoon. You, you don't have to finish it all. Um, but just have a, a wee a nose in that as well. The brimstone is a bit of a banana skin because that, that, the sauna thing that you're talking about is that, that they smoke the liquid here rather than the grain. So the smoke in it is very, very odd. It's like nothing else that exists out there. This has been open quite a while too, this brimstone. Interesting. But the, so the, the one that I've just poured for you, we're, we're not going to dwell on this, but if, I think if you take a wee sip of it, and if you were to try and put an age on it, there is just no way that you would put the right age on this if you're sipping it blind. Yeah, that's... It's delicious, ten, right? Ten? Yeah, it's delicious. But it's 15 months old. Oh, for goodness sake. Aged in at least 15 months. Hmm. 15 months, right? In Texas, is that, that in Scottish years? It's like dog years for whiskey. Yeah, dog years. And it's, it's just that kind of that climatic, the, the, the temperature drop. And it, so it's just the wood sucking in and expelling out the, the whiskey. It's just the interaction is so accelerated. They end up with something like that, which is mm -hmm. interesting. The other two, I believe, are interesting. -er. <laughs> interesting. -er. Just a slight side note. Did you know that dog years depends on the weight of your dog? Dog years? Yeah, so my daughter, one of my daughters is a vet, and uh, she told me that last week that when you're figuring out the age of your dog to compare it to a human, it's not just you multiply by seven. You there's a chart, and then there's a there's a row for the weight of your dog. Yep. Uh, and then there's a tells you the conversion. So the so the, I always thought this so dog years small, was just a non a nonsensical. But, but actually, the, there is a real way to... Well, I mean, it's 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 only it's still only a rule of thumb, but the, the reason why it came up is because our dog is a 13 and a half, but he's a, he's a Labrador, and he's quite a chunky Labrador. So Labradors get chunky. Well, he, but he, anyway, he's a big boy, but um, you have to take the weight into account. So because he's a 35 kilo Labrador, which is quite fat, uh, he's 84 in dog years, um, ah. whereas if he was a tiny wee chihuahua, he'd be like um, sixty or something. The who knew? So um, the things that you learn. I need to talk to you. We need to talk about the vet thing after the, the, the live stream tonight. Just I, I know I will forget. Big dogs don't get as old as small dogs. Oh, yeah, that, that's it. Yeah, is so that what the, it is? yeah, so Great Danes live to about seven years old or something like that. I think. Oh wow! I know. And wee dogs last a lot. Yes, <laughs> chunky the, Labrador. The meek shall inherit the earth. I know, I know. So yeah, I think we need to, we need to. Uh, the, the folks know what you're sipping, and they've they've been quite uh, yeah. impressed by your your notes. But I mean, it's it's impressive what Texas whiskey can taste like yes. at a ridiculously young age, right? So the one on the right, uh, you've you've already said, suggested that you've enjoyed it, mm -hmm. and the one on the left, um, you've enjoyed too, but you've nailed it. We've got here, uh, Glengoyne, twenty five year old. You thought it was a teenager. Uh, interestingly, I, I've, I opened this for the fundraiser that we had here when there was loads of folk came around here to do the, the charity fundraiser at late 2021. Um, Fraser was here, Ben Whiskey with Molly, Sevy was here, Scott was here, Ben Whiskey Geek was here, there's quite a few, and we opened it. So it's taken me a wee while, I went through it at a reasonable pace. Not as enjoyable as their, their I had a previous 25 year old to this. It's still good, still delicious, but you pitched that as a teenager tonight. I mean, teenager. you know, compared with the Ben Benroma 21. I know, I know. So does that mean that space age years are worse, <laughs> less than <laughs> Highland Southern years? Highland years, <laughs> right. I don't know. No, that's, it's, don't, don't, it's, that's on me. That's very much on me. It's Ben Romach 21. At least you suggested it was Scotch, right? But uh, I, not, neither of us had it close to 20 no, years. No, it's embarrassing, years. isn't it? Never mind. And that's what, that's what I'm going to say in future. So, like, if when sh people come in the shop, I'll be like, "Yeah, yeah, it ages faster in the Highlands than it does." Than it does in space. Just <laughs> <laughs> see how much you get, how long you keep your job, right? Uh, lag. Lag. It's three years old. Three years old. 
You suggested ten. Yeah, I did. Yeah. So it's a, so it's mature at three years old. That's well. This is. This I mean, is I, so the, their original three. I bought this in your shop. Mm -hmm. I think I bought it from you that day. I don't know, but I bought the uh, the original bourbon cask one. This is pricey whiskey. It's, this is not yeah. cheap. It's seventy five pounds. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But let's not talk about how much Glen going twenty five is now to buy. Okay, yeah. it's it's out of reach now. I bought that one. It was much much cheaper. Um, but lag is this is three year old whiskey. It's seventy five pounds. You have you been to lag yet? I don't know if you visited no. lag. Okay, when you when you see this 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 size and this shape of their stills, it's almost they're almost triangular, right? They're stodgy, big, fat, hefty things. It's clear that they're making, they're aiming for a very different style of whiskey. And I think it's coming across even mm -hmm. as young as three years. I think the body in this, I think the, the weight, the heft of it, I think it's amazing that they've managed. Now, the, the bourbon cask is young and jaggy. I didn't try the, the, the red wine cask, but the, out of the three first releases, uh, this was the third, the sherry cask. Mm -hmm. And I, I am struggling to... I really need to be careful. I want this to last as long as it can, but that is a compelling whiskey to me. Mm. Interesting. Um, that, I didn't. I tried the the first inaugural release, and I didn't get the salty note in that. Yeah, I would be interested to go back. I wonder I've if it's, I wonder. I wonder if it's because of the contrast with the other two. Uh, oh, isn't it always? Isn't yeah. it always just the, the night, the mood? The, chemical condition of your palate, whatever it may mm -hmm, be, mm -hmm. whatever you've been sipping or eating or that kind of thing, it changes it always. Um, and what I didn't tell anyone is that there is a wee surprise at the end for uh, Roddy uh, tonight. It's not it's not an exciting surprise, yeah. um, but there is, uh, rather than me sitting here and hosting a quiz, look who's just dropped in. Ah, <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> Look at Roddy trying to pretend he's pleased. <laughs> <laughs> a friend from Belgium is joining us this evening, and I'm sorry to I didn't announce it to anybody. I didn't want anybody to know. I wanted everybody to be kind to the man after he brutalised me. I, I was on Isla, and I get two out of ten on a win because it was horrific. What's worse is I was playing against Cousin Kevin, who scored a seven. Oof. And uh, I can't wait till the next time I see Kevin because I'm sure it's going to be one of the first things he mentions. But it can be brutal. But the point is, is that it's fun. So we're not, rather than me quizzing you or something, we're going to, both of us are going to suffer and I'll probably get a do in on that as well. Do we need the bits of paper to hold up? Uh, we may do, but we can improvise that. I've got right. a piece of paper here and I've got an ink here in the corner. So I, we can do that here. Um, so there will be a wee bit later tonight, a Menno quiz. How are we doing for time? We're an hour and a half in, uh, so we're doing okay for time. I'm glad to see that Menno's joined us because that means that, that we do have a quiz happening. Let's jump into the chat and see what some of you guys are saying. Um, <laughs> let's see how many people bail now that they know that Men Menno's hosting the quiz <laughs> at the end. <laughs> Yes, he is did it? right. Stop living in denial, says Menno. You're poor, misguided, 54-ish man. I am not 54-ish. It's not that time yet, is it? It's 20, it's 20 past 11. Make the think, most of it. I think I'll finish the VPUB tonight. It's still at the youthful uh, uh, age of uh, I can easily, old. easily monologue for 40 minutes. Uh, <laughs> and keep it going. Falscraft is saying um, it's quite possible that whiskey... Uh, that tastes pretty umami may also taste salty. Uh -huh, there, there is a salty element to MSG. Absolutely. Yeah, right. There's good a, shout. Good um, shout. Uh, I think age matters very little in Texas unless you leave it too long, of course. Uh, I think that's right, Jimmy. I think you're absolutely spot on. That, um, that, and, and we're not buying Mirador and uh, the Texas single malts or whatever's coming out from Balcones, from Garrison Brothers from Iron Root, from any of the Texas distilleries, they're not leading with age statement. Mm -hmm. I am not aware of a single Texas whiskey that de that displays an age statement. It's it's almost like people would measure it against other whiskeys such as Scotch that would render it almost silly or, or something, you know. They, they have to... Mm -hmm. yeah. I'm trying to think about any American whiskeys. There was a Westland that had an age statement on it recently. Um, Generally speaking, American malt whiskies and American uh, whiskies in general, there are bourbons out there with age statements on it, right enough. Didn't uh, St. George? 
California. Uh, didn't they have a a three year old something? Maybe a three year old. Yeah. Yeah. I'm trying, I, I think I've, I've got a Westland yeah. there with an age statement on it, and it, mm -hmm. I remember thinking it was quite or a Westward. I get confused, and but it's it, because it had an age statement on it. I thought, oh, that's it was it was quite jarring. It was mm -hmm. quite it was mm -hmm. different. Um, but yeah, they're they're very much in the minority. Yeah, mm -hmm. and, and people are okay with it. Mm -hmm. The reason that the age statement is such an issue, issue in Scotch is because of the legacy of the whiskey law. What we're dealing with in age statement today is actually perception. And I think what people are asking for without realizing what they're asking for is transparency. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. When the age statement is taken away with no explanation, that's difficult. Mm -hmm. And then when something else, when something new comes out and there's no obvious reason why the age isn't talked about or or or, or stated, I think it, it, it does create, because of the legacy of what happened towards the end of the last century mm -hmm. with, with age statement, it conditioned us to think along the lines of age. Mm -hmm. You see it in Hollywood movies, somebody will say that, oh, this is a 30-year-old scotch. You know, that's what they'll say is they hold the glass up and things. And it's like, oh, 30 year old Scotch. Is, that, that doesn't mean anything other than the fact that it's been an oak for it. It could be in, it could be really poor malt and really poor oak for mm -hmm. 30 years. Um, okay, it's unlikely, There's, as we were talking about earlier, it's rare to find a bad whiskey, mm -hmm. let's be honest. I, I think what I would like to see is us not setting ourselves up for being overcharged for anything with a mm. decent age statement, 12 years plus, is becoming more and more and more expensive. Every yeah. time, it's almost like every time you go back to buy another age statement of that, it's just becoming more and more expensive. Oh, but, but it's but it's 15 year old, but it's 18 year old, mm. whatever it may be. I think, I think it, you know, our whole hobby, and I know this is my job, but Scotch is also one of my hobbies, um, uh, our whole hobby is very much bound up with the stories that we tell about it and the stories that the distillers and bottlers tell us and the age statement is part of that and it's it's super hard to pull apart to separate I mean and, and let you know like the, the and this is why the blind tasting is so important because it it that forces you that forcibly pulls you away from the stories that you're telling about the whiskey and makes you just assess it in terms of flavor but you, yeah. you know when you're when you're going to the shop to buy something you can't do that you know i mean you, you i guess you could march into the shop you could come into the good spirits and say to me there's 75 pounds give me something and and this is and, this is the point i was making when you and i were chatting before we live yeah. tonight is that there's so much of that we're lucky to have the good spirits company here that we can go in and say oh I've got that open. Would you like to try aye, a little aye, bit, right? Aye, and we can aye. try a wee, a wee sip of it before to, to get a sense of it. But so many of the things that I'm trying to to get people to consider are post-purchase things, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. You know, the quality, the flavour, you know, the texture, the, all of these things are... are you, we, we don't... So what people need is more information on the label. My point is that I think today in 2023... If that information is not an age statement, we need some way of understanding what makes up. So we've got Tomatin decades, for example, that's mm -hmm. stretched over five decades. They're not allowed to put on the label or anywhere else how much of what has gone into the thing. Mm -hmm. And that's that makes sense because mm -hmm. Tomatin could literally put in one wee barrel of something from the 70s and, and everything else is, is, you know, the younger and cheaper the whiskey becomes, the more it bulks up. Mm -hmm. That, it makes sense then that, that that they would, they would. There has to be a, a, a quality thing there where, if they're going to suggest by leveraging age statement to make it look older than it is, does mm -hmm. that make sense? Mm -hmm. So, the 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 quality thing works in both directions. Yes. What we need is transparency. Mm -hmm. What we need is a way to pre-purchase have reassurance of what we're spending money on we know that old that, whiskey old whiskey interestingly is not that expensive to age 
it's pennies per litre, mm. but it's very, very rare. As the years tick by, there's less and less mm -hmm. and less and less of it. And that probably is a bigger, as I understand it, a bigger factor to drive the price rather than the cost of maturing the thing. However, the, it, it, we're not sitting down here suggesting that old whiskey should be cheaper. Or I think it should be no, cheaper. No, we are. <laughs> I think we sh it should be cheaper, Gosh. actually. But it shouldn't be. <laughs> I demand £90 for a 25-year-old. <laughs> yeah, it shouldn't be cheap. But it should be sold contextually, honestly. Mm -hmm. I, I think right now we're we're setting ourselves up for a situation where we're going to be asked to pay far too much money for anything with a decent age statement on it. And all the while ignore all of these amazing flavor bomb whiskies that's coming along today from independents, from new producers mm -hmm. that are uh, that are going to redefine that legacy that we've been taught for decades. Mm. I, th I think, um, you know, we, we were talking about it uh, before the VPUB, the Ben Wivis, you know, which is a no age statement whiskey and it, it is clearly three years old. Yeah, it's absolutely the, the very definition of a flavour bomb. It's just such an exciting dram. How can you get that much fruit into three year old I whiskey? I know, I know, it's amazing. Um, yeah. So that's it's, it's not from the spirit, yeah, the way the spirit is made, yeah, it's the, rather than how it's mature. The start of the process. Yeah. You know, we we you know you taste that and you you know you can be drinking Ben Wivis and be like, I don't need age statements. Mm. You know, all I need is to to know that the distiller wants to make good whiskey at the start of the process. Um, but you know, I think the, the first step is for us to detach. A reliance on age statement, right? but it, but it, 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 and just accept that young whiskey can be good. Mm -hmm. Once we know that young whiskey can be good, then we're suddenly presented with whether an age statement exists or not. An attitude of tasting for flavour, tasting for quality, that that kind of thing. And I know it's, so for so many of you, it's difficult, and it does require you to gamble on purchases, mm -hmm. and that's why the community is here. That's why we are here drinking these whiskies in contrast. That's why we are, when we find and discover something that's drink, good. Drink. Oh, God, I'm holding it. Drink, Brack. That's all you need. Just oh, I, tell, I tell you what we're going to do. We're going we're gonna to open this bottle because here we have something of a benchmark. Now, I'm a wee bit worried for Wolfburn because we've been drinking some, some strong performers tonight that, con in the context of what we have in front of us, we need another two glasses, <clears throat> and I need an inky as well. I'll grab the inky, you grab the glasses. There we go. Everything on hand. It's a very small room here in the V-Pub. Um, so this, we're opening Wolf Burns, 10-year-old. Congratulations, Wolf Burn. Busy doing your wee thing up there in the very, very north of the mainland. Oh, that's going to make a nice noise. <laughs> But it's, I'm holding that. That that makes off. Is this me? Yeah, it's that one. Yeah. <laughs> there you go, Phil. Thank you. Not making a lot of noise about it, as you were saying, Wolfburn. But yeah, they're, now, they're they're suddenly quieter, appeared, they? Yeah. Suddenly appeared. A PR release went out a few weeks ago, a couple of weeks ago, talking about how they have now got their core. And this is not a special edition. This is not a kind of flash in the pan type release this is their core range they've mm -hmm. stated that this is their core whiskey going forward so it's quite interesting to that some of the newer producers are considering kind of almost following that kind of legacy model of age stated whiskey cheers slangeva slangeva nothing untoward it's very wolf burp wolf burn sorry wolf burp in style, I don't. I'm not getting much peat smoke. I was expecting. No. A is there a malt is there, forward? Yeah. Is there is there peat in the vatting here at all? I wonder. There's, and it's much. it's the um, malt, a, uh, in the kind of beery mode. Do you know, like it, it's, it smells like a. As if you're visiting a distillery and you're you're walking in. Yeah. There, yeah. You know where when the you're in the tun room. Serially, serially, yeah. yeah. Uh -huh. There's a bit of citrus on it. There's a bit of light, kind of fresh, jaggy citrus. Hmm. It is, isn't it? 
can't I can't decide if it's lemon or orange, which probably means it's like a grapefruit rind or something. Or... I'm going lemon. Mm. It's really quite soft. Oh wow. That's most of the wolf worms I've had have been quite shouty. So, so you'd agree that it's soft. It's yeah. it's much softer than I expected. Absolutely, it's it's there. There is there is a, a suggestion of maturity here. I think that that surprises a wee mm. bit. There's no jaggies in this at all. I mean, I, I know it, that I'm it's, it's, five, six grams in, so the well, jaggies the, the more drams you have, there's the less jaggies that exist. Mm -hmm. uh, for me, that I do detect a wee bit of jaggy, but a wee bit of jaggy that's pleasant at forty six percent. You know, the kind of the kind of the texture that tells you that you are sipping something that's that's not uh, overly reduced. It's, the finish is, is decent. I'm still tasting it. Mm -hmm. The the citrus is coming back in the finish. Remember, it's a neck pour. Literally uncorked it tonight. <laughs> Everything we're talking about is in the context. You gave me a pour. neck pour? <laughs> Mind you, I gave you a neck pour. Somebody has to have... Uh, somebody I know, has to I have. know, I know. So the, so the James E.D. was a neck, neck pour? Neck pour, yeah. That, that's what went wrong tonight. Uh, that's what did it. That was, that's that was it, the whole yeah. thing. <laughs> Dan Thompson saying, in the spirit of the V-Pub, I've been drinking a non age statement tonight from best to worst Cotswolds. Glen Glasser Evolution, Arna Murkin, Glen Scotia Victoriana, Fave dram at the moment. Okay, so from best, so I think he meant from worst to best. If, if Victoria is his favourite, okay. I think so. Yeah, but there you go, Cotswolds. But they they do have a vintage statement. Normally they have a vintage statement. In my experience, uh, have a wee look down and see if it has. Glen Glass Evolution is is one of those non statements that's getting better year after year after year. There's more. If you have a recent batch of Evolution, it's not going to taste anything like your uh, early bo bottles of Evolution. Uh, that's, you know, no pun intended on the name there, but they're pulling in more mature stocks all the time. Arna Merkin, of course, we talk about it uh, at length. Um, it's, ob it's already a very, very delicious spirit at a young age. Just super excited to see what they do in the future. And Victoriana, well, the one that picked up the only Scotch Whiskey Awards Best Scotch Whiskey last year was a non-age statement. It was the Victoriana. You're enjoying? I am, yes. It's the... I don't know whether it's an age thing, but... I can usually one... get away with burps, but I think with this one... <laughs> <laughs> We're going to go back to the... Yeah, we might go uh, back to it. The, uh, one of the uh, shorthand notes I have for wolf burn is I, I often find a kind of mineral note to it, and I'm not really finding that in this one. I've never it's... found it in, in wolf burn. No. Right. Okay. But, I mean, I will. But, but, but I'm aware that mineral is, is a kind of ne one of those nebulous... Tasting notes a bit like uh, funky, you know. You have to yeah, you redefine have to go it. A bit you know, what kind of mineral? Are you talking about chalky powder? Are you talking about a stony I, pebble? Are you talking I think about it's kind of a kind of a stony thing, not salty. You know, like a a, a slaty thing. You know, I hope, but I'm not finding that in this, and I wonder if that's just to do with the age. This is more, as you say, cereal with citrus. Casked out the minerals. Aged, Jimmy aged them out. I think. But Jimmy Legg is here to keep us straight. Ah. Oh, he just brings enough cynicism ah. to not, he's like the buffer to keep us on track. You know, just this like, hey, hey, don't be. Tried Dram Moore's six year old Glen Glasser from 2022 and it was gorgeous, says Mero. Mm. That's reminded me that one of the points I wanted to pick up on was that. Um, uh, I guess five, more than that, six or seven years ago now, um, Carnmore kind of were slightly leading the way or, or pushing the envelope. Do you remember? For they, younger. Yeah, do younger, you remember they had a yeah. series of like a four-year-old Glen Talkers? Yeah, and a, yeah, I remember it well. I remember and, it well. Was Graham McKay not working Yes, he was. Then, I, yeah, and, yeah. And, you know, so, I, and I remember they all came out because that's back when they, they were originally Carnmore um, the Strictly Limited, for example, where they were bringing out lovely 18 year old Bin Rennes, mm -hmm. 60 quid, you know, that, that kind of thing, mm -hmm. the, the good old days. And then suddenly all of these really young age statement things appeared. And I was like, oh, 
but I remember being in a good spirits company and and people saying back then it's only going to get more more and more of this. This is the future, you know. The days, but they were good, though. They were good. Well, they they again, but we had to trust. We had to try before we could buy most of the time. Yeah. For so many folk out there that's going into retail and the the idea of opening a bottle to try before you buy is is very very unlikely. It's you know we don't all have these specialist retailers who do have bottles on the go like you guys do, mm -hmm. or have the tasting events. Or those kind of things where you just, I used to love the Good Spirits Company ones where you turned up for a whiskey tasting and you had no idea what was getting tasted. It was just a whiskey tasting and it was just whatever you guys fancied off the shelves, right? Yeah, we still do that. You're st still picking it off the shelves. You're, you're, and now you've got the tasting room opened again, haven't mm, you? Yes, I, we're, we're, we're back to uh, full in-person tastings. Yeah, um, the world trundles on, right? It does. Yeah. Um, so um, it's been a while since I've been at a GSC, I need to just for the pure nostalgia. <laughs> um, I don't think the chat's improved. I would, I would, I would say that the tasting chat. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's yeah. that's only a good thing because I always loved it. So. Um, Graham Fraser's in tonight. Graham, I, I want to raise a wee glass and say thank you to you. The stuff that you're adding into the Aquavite bar flies chat of bringing. He's vicariously bringing the Spirit of Space Side Festival. I saw that, yeah. I've, been, I've been seeing it all week. Uh, I mean, I have to say, I'm grinding my teeth <laughs> every well, post. I know. Because there's a jealousy there, right? I've, I've um, got a tourist paper. I know, now, I like. know. I've been to Spirit of Space Side before and loved it, and it just made Never me been. want to go back. Um, this, I'm doing Isla Fesh this year, uh, so I couldn't really justify. Excellent. Uh, both festivals, both within a month of each know, other, right? Yeah. And Campbelltown festivals in there as well, and ah, yeah. it's just it's, it's this, difficult this, to get around. So many events, isn't there? Too much whiskey, too many. But it's, it's these are all good complaints. Mm -hmm. Graham, thank you very much for Fred. Cheers. So, whiskey Central Shale is in. Yeah, she's celebrating being a member for twenty-seven months. You star Shale, it's so amazing to have you. I hope you have a wonderful birthday tomorrow, Roy. Well. Do you know what? <laughs> We've not even kicked the quiz off yet. So in about 22 minutes time, uh, you will see, I I'm sitting here with Roddy. I've got brilliant whiskies in front of me. I've got fabulous folk in the community and I'm just about to enjoy a birthday quiz from Menno. <laughs> ah, prepare it's, to it's, be humiliated. It's, it's, going to be, it's going to be an amazing Ten banana skins. Day. Everwind, uh, I was showing off your challenge coin, Chris. Uh, uh, he, I'll, I'll show you it later on tonight. I, I looked out. Chris sent me an, a NASA International Space Station challenge coin about five or six years ago. Uh, it's, it's it's very very cool. And uh, I there was uh, one of my buddies. Sorry, one of my pa my son's buddies is into NASA, and I was showing it off, and I was saying, oh, and he was like, how did you get that? And I told him that it was from a genuine a guy that who works for NASA, and. Uh, uh, it was it was it was nice to show it off, buddy, and it's great to see you, and it's good to see that you're still on the VPUB all these years later. It uh, just got on to have you just have you discussed the competition from spirits that can get old age taste from small number of years because of hot climate and impact on Scotch? Could that be driving non age statements too? I don't think it's driving non age statement Scots Scotch whiskey. I think they're doing the wrong thing. We did cover it tonight. We talked about Texas. We talked about Indian whiskey. Me like an idiot thinking a twenty one year old Ben Romack was an Indian. A uh, non age statement whiskey, <laughs> uh, but I think Ben Romack should take that as a compliment. And if they don't, they need to try that in Dre whiskey, they need to try it, it's incredible stuff. Um, but yes, we did talk about it briefly, as amongst lots of other th messy things tonight. Everyone, Graham, are you saying happy birthday, Adi Eleroy? Uh, coming up soon, cheers. Okay, I, I, the, the, the only thing that we can't do anything about is time right just, just <laughs> time is just gonna be its thing helen is saying one of the best young age statements we've found is the murray mcdavid five-year-old inch gower from last year's spirit of space side a sublime dram well you kept that secret helen i didn't get to try that one was it a special for the spirit of space side and jimmy is saying campbelltown festival on september 25th when i'm there you'll get to see the biggest smile in the world well that's not the campbelltown festival jimmy but it's your campbelltown festival and I imagine that it will be. Falscraft has seen my quiz results. She is prepared. I never give up hope. Menno is tough, but hey, I may even get a 10 with Menno if I had a chance to know his questions. I always second guess. I always second guess. Shall we do it then?
Well, how do we summarise? How do we summarise tonight? I mean, I I think what people need and are asking for is information. Pre-purchase, not post-purchase. You know, it's wonderful that they stumble upon something that turns out to be magnificent or they get a recommendation from a friend. But wouldn't it be wonderful if people could hold the bottle in their hand and say, oh, I don't see anything about the age. But they're able to somehow get the message across of what's in the bottle beforehand. I I know it's difficult, I know it's tricky, but I also think that we need to adjust our expectations and our outlook and the lens that, that we look at whiskey through right now because the whiskey that we are enjoying today, the whiskey that we can buy today, you're in retail, you know, 10 years, 12 years ago, completely different. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. 10 years before that, again, completely different again. So do we want to be part of tomorrow's memories or today's whinging and moaning? Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, I'm, I'm going to have to come back to what I said right at the start was that it's complicated. <laughs> you know, and I know that's a useless kind of an answer, but essentially what it boils down to is, again, what I said at the start, one of the reasons why I love whiskey is because it's a mahusive rabbit hole to go down. Um, and, you know, we we explore whiskies and we we taste things, we swap samples with pals, we go to festivals. You know, the, the we, we, we can approach no age statement whiskies with eyes open and our cynical hat on or our fanboy hat on, um, you know, I'm repeating myself again and again, it's complicated. There's there's I no think, there's no short answer. You just Well, have there to... is a short answer. The community becomes more and more important. Mm. As we get together and we share where we find treasures and gems, and we hold up a red flag when we find that we've been overcharged or fleeced, mm -hmm. that, that needs to be more and more of a thing going forward. And I, I know that for you in retail, the more whiskey you sell, the better it is for you generally. But I know that that's not what you... You love whiskey for whiskey's sake. And the, the fact that you're working and selling a whiskey is incidental and the advice you give is always genuine and honest and contextual and all of those great things. But I think that in order for whiskey to endure, in order for it to be what it can be, I think that right now we're going through a transitional time that's very different from any other transitional time. But as a community, we will manage the way through it. We will manage to find where the gems are and there's a great idea whiskey swap whiskey meets. swap meets <laughs> but is, is, that not, is that not happening Ian? i mean m maybe if you need to i mean that's that club nights uh it's you mm. know people get i mean the, the problem with swap meet is, is that you do and maybe it's just me right now but i'm drowning in samples right now that my liver is not right. big enough to to consume the whiskey i want to consume in order so to... club stefan not um stefan can yeah yeah um, he has a great. They have met the two Stefans. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> um, so Club <laughs> Stefan, um, he he has this great metric or or shorthand that you know you, you're talking about whiskies that you might try, um, and he says, well, I don't know if I want to waste my units on that. So that's this. Yeah. You know yeah. this this. I don't know. If, do other countries have have units? So the in the UK, the government gives this sort of shorthand that you should drink 14 units a week. Um, and so a standard 25 mil whiskey at 40 percent is one unit so in a week you're you're only meant to drink 14 units so so stefan when when we're talking about what to try next he's like do i want to waste a unit on that you know and i think that's that's kind of a, a good point you know you yes you know you have to you have to be selective about what you do and you rely on recommendations from Club members, bar so flies. If, you, if you're in an environment that, that we often get to be in, privileged environment where mm -hmm. we get to consume whiskey by the unit, <laughs> right? Um, the, absolutely, Stefan's advice is a fantastic uh, uh, route of advice to follow. However, if you're in an environment where you can't get to try, mm -hmm. you, you have to lean on the community more and more. Uh, Aquaviti Barflies page, uh, the chat in here, the chat that exists after the video is finished, 
uh, social media, wh wherever it is, in real life, if you're fortunate enough to have a club like we do, all of these things, are, are you, we need to be more and more in tune with, I think, to, mm -hmm. to dig out the good stuff and raise a red flag when things are a wee bit a wee bit of a mess because <laughs> it aye, does aye. happen it does it, whiskey remains a business we have to always remember that whiskey mystery fellas and deeper is the same with units it doesn't want to waste her liver on anything less than brona <laughs> i think <laughs> i wish i wish <laughs> i don't know if you know phil and deeper no. marvelous to watch deeper's reactions specifically wonderful oh see. i i have i have yes no you you introduced me that to that before, so I have seen one or two of them. Terrific, yeah. terrific. Yeah. Yes, I do evangelize about the films yes. and the deepness. Yeah. They're amazing. Um, aye, and uh, listen, uh, you've got an expensive date there, Phil, with uh, with Deepa. If, if it's Brora is a pinnacle, I think Brora is way up. I think it's if it's not the top, it's in their top three, and their gantry behind them. They, they, it's all blind. It's all done based on blind tasting as well. What they put to the, the front, super interesting to see fascinating to see it's incredible and the two of them are very uh, humble about the palettes that they've developed in a very short space of time but it's 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 amazing to watch <sighs> somebody's bought me a drum uh, where's roy fabulous uh, roy where's roy is roy uh, he's saying for roddy's t-shirt what does it say uh, it says increase, increase the, the peace, peace. <laughs> so the, there's a there's a um treble button a bass button and a, a peace button, a peace button and a hand reaching out to increase the peace. Increase the peace. Aye, uh, yeah. we drink to that. Roy, thanks for the drum, fella, as well. Cheers. Um, Famous story, but in a train carriage, uh, Roy, this Roy from Norway, sitting next to me in here, and we're chatting. And he, I said, I need some water. He said, I've got water. He gives me a bottle of water. It's amazing. Thank you. We carry on to the festival. It's an hour and ten minutes to the train journey to the festival. And suddenly, as we're chatting away, I'm looking, I'm just kind of looking to see if everybody's there. And I realise I don't see Roy. And I blurt out, where's Roy? <laughs> and he's in here. And everybody's going, what's Roy? And I'm saying, Roy over me. And he's like, that Roy? And he, and he, and he, and he, he goes like... <laughs> ah, so he's changed his name from Roy over me to where's Roy? Thank you, buddy. <laughs> Helping me not live that down. I think it's uh, that's actually worse than guessing a 21-year-old Ben Romack is a, is, a, is a young Indian malt whiskey. Anyway, we shall continue. Let's reach out to our friend in Belgium. Let's welcome in uh, the intimidating man that he is. He's not actually when you meet him, but uh, his reputation. Menno, come in, my friend. How are you? I'm good. Cheers. Oh, we can hear you. Good to see you, buddy. How are you? Are you well? Oh, well. Oh, well. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. I, I am ready for some pre-birthday punishment. How can I be cruel when it's your birthday coming up, Roy? Okay. Is this going to be a birthday present? I see you've hung up some bunting in the background. Uh, it's my uh, my oldest uh, daughter is uh, turned, turned nine earlier this week, so that's for her. It's not for you. I'm sorry. Fantastic. <laughs> so it's also for me, yeah. And that yeah. means that she she's also, we share a star sign, I suppose. Fantastic. Many happy returns to Cheers. your daughter. This is the first time that we've spoke to each other face to face since I, my humiliation on Isla, right? Um, maybe, yeah. Do yeah. you admit that that Isla quiz? No, sorry, it's not an Isla quiz. The quiz that you brought—it uh, was Vin, wasn't it? No nonsense, mm -hmm, Whiskey's mm -hmm. channel. The quiz that you brought may be your worst, cruelest, most tricky quiz no. ever. No, 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 no. It, it wasn't was, intentionally. Uh, it was terrible. Cruel. It was brutal. You were you were coming you were bouncing back from COVID, so that's probably what uh, what did you win? Well, as long as you make excuses for me, you can stay. <laughs> <laughs> Roddy and I have our, our A B C's ready, so that we can hold it up and we can. Are we competing? What are we competing for? A lack of red face. Kudos. I mean, given the uh, Ben Romach banana skin. There's, we we can't come back from that, Roy. You know, the... let's, let's do our very, very best. Listen, for everybody, there's still over 250 of you, and amazing to see uh, at this time of night as well. Thank you Brave so much. People. Hang around for the quiz at the end. I know a lot of you disappear for the quiz because you don't think it's for you, but it's often a lot of fun. And even when you score a miserly 2 out of 10, you still learn a lot from it. Mm. 
if, have I learned Usually. enough to, to do any better tonight? Let's wait and see. Okay. Men my dear friend, can we stay friends? I hope so. <laughs> nah. Okay, buddy. Let's uh, take it away. I'll, I'll add this into the stream and I'll let you um, go at your own Belgian pace. Strap in. The okay. Roddy edition. The Roddy oh. edition. So it's questions so it's just about Brackler then, yeah? <laughs> <laughs> or questions about Roddy. Maybe, maybe, maybe there's some Roddy questions. There's some questions on, on team of on the team of tonight. So uh, we'll see. And I think I have been kind. So question one, which is the most important question of all, how is a Rob Roy made? <laughs> Oh my goodness. A Rob it, Roy. Yes. Is it A, two to one ratio of scotch to vermouth and some dashes of, of Angostura bitters? Is it B, two to one ratio of vermouth to scotch and some dashes of Angostura bitters? Or is it C, a Rob Roy is made with rye, surely? You, you, have, to, you have to put the, the so, or hold it so that I don't get to see what you're picking up. Does oh, that make sense? God. Right. So two to one, 60, 30 is scotch vermouth, and that's vermouth scotch, right? Yep. Okay. Standard, this is not a reverse. That, no, this is not a reverse. Right. This is not one, 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 one of those is standard, one of, one of those is reverse. Right. right. Okay. But which yeah. is which? I'm looking for the yeah. standard. I'm looking for the standard one. Okay. I'm ready and I've when you checked have... on multiple cocktail sites just to be sure. <laughs> okay. <laughs> going out, going out, this is a, pot a potential flashpoint right here. I'm ready when you are, buddy. Okay, then in three, here we go. Two, one, A and A. Relieved. Well Relieved. done, the both of you. Well done, the both of you. Off to a good start. <laughs> okay. I go Question ahead, two. Celebrating their 125th anniversary, anniversary, Sperryburn Distillery decided to to do what for the first time ever? Is it A, release a series of whiskies that with a combined age of 125, 125 years? Is it B, release a whiskey from a vetting of 125 casks? Or is it C, open its doors to the public? Ready? Uh, I'm ready. It's the least was. Okay. Then three, two, one. Answers, please. C and C, indeed, in the recent. Thanks to Graham Fraser for that Spirit one. Of... Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. He pretty much spammed us Here's on uh, Facebook uh, with pictures from Spayburn. <laughs> okay. Quickly onwards to question three. Last <laughs> year, Tomatin released its first ever H stated expression of Kuboken. And the name Kuboken refers to an old legend and it translates to what? Mm. Is it A, haunted fox, B, ghost dog, or C, lone wolf? Ready? <laughs> Ready? We're not doing a lot of chatting. We're, I feel the tension. <laughs> we're not, we feel like we're, we're playing along with it. Okay, tonight. Yes, I'm ready. Okay. Then answers in three, two, one. B and B. The ghost right. dog. Absolutely. Yes. I told you I, I told you I was mild. Oh no. This okay. Is, this is the this is the getting us to feel comfortable. Cruising. Uh, okay. Just keep okay. it like this. Just keep it like this. Okay. Uh, Do you like I'll... three for three? Too slow three for three. Lots of three for threes happening in there so fast. Kyle Taylor, three for three. Is that a new name, Kyle? Nice to have you here. Papa Q, Mike Molasses. Oops, Whiskey Mine Trails, Tom. Orange Wheel. Carry on, Mel. Sorry. No, no, no. Okay, then question four. Famous, uh, question three, sorry. Famous, oh, what? No, uh, this question two. Oh, did I mess it up? And did I put oh, in two? I this. Yeah, I did. So there'll be 11 <laughs> questions for tonight's quiz, apparently. <laughs> 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 have, we, have we got two is that two questions yeah, yeah this is this is this is actually okay. let's just go the, with it Manuel. let's just yep. make it work it's labeled as three but it's the fourth question yeah. brilliant 
Brilliant. Okay, famous, okay, famous for using animals. Which of these flora and fauna expressions is the oldest? Is it A, the Blair Atoll, B, the Ben Rinus, or C, Inge Gower? Oh. Ooh. It's tricky. Is it that one? You're a retailer, Rod. You were, you were talking about how they're, they're affordable. They're still. good value for money. Ready? Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Yeah. Take three, a punt in two. three, two, one. Answers, please. You're both going for the Ben Rinnes, and you're both absolutely right. It's a 15 year old. Four for four. Yeah. 14 four. inch car. Yep. Okay. The real question for then is another. Royal Brackla, a distillery with an appreciation society <laughs> consisting of about three people, <laughs> brands itself. <laughs> How <laughs> is it A the king's own whiskey? Is it B royal by name, royal by nature, or is it C as approved by Roddy Graham? Man, well, that is not fair. I want to answer C. Come on, well, it's question five. <laughs> you can throw it, you can sacrifice and just answer C. <laughs> yeah, you can throw yourself under the bus and answer C, but. This is an absolute banana skin. <laughs> ready? Uh, okay. Yes, I'm ready. But Three. I am a wee bit nervous. <laughs> Three, okay. two, one. Answers, please. It's a. We're Talk about together. missed opportunities. It is indeed a. <laughs> but it clearly should have been C. See. <laughs> <laughs> okay. On to the picture Mr. question. Thomas said B, but I want it to be C. <laughs> so did I. And uh, they say Leland is saying I got a Royal Brackler gift as a gift today. Yeah. There you go. That's your force. Uh, I got to hang out in Limburg with AC, and she's amazing. So uh, she could be a fantastic force recruit for excellent the Royal Brackler Appreciation Society. Let us know how you got on with it, Daisy. Right, is it, so are we, we're, we're currently at five out of four, aren't we? Yes, absolutely. Five, five for five. Five for five. <laughs> okay, the picture question then. Where would you find this image of a deer? Ooh. Is it A, is it in a now disused logo from a Speyside distillery? Is it B, a logo from a new 21st century Highland distillery? Or is it C, a logo from an indie butler? I felt confident before it came up and it's up. So I'm going, I'm going with it. Uh, Roddy's shaking his head. No, I think he's just, he's just pretending he's finding it hard, ah. but he's finding it dead easy. Right. All right. Then in three, two, one, answers, please. <laughs> You've got a oh, 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 I thought that was the GM logo. Now I'm panicking. I thought it was the Oakland Fiddick logo. No, Roy no. is absolutely right. It was C. Oh, oh. oh. <laughs> <laughs> five for six. I get to six for six. I only get a birthday once a year, and like, yeah. does that come on the stroke of midnight as well? Oh, does it yes, 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 yes. <laughs> It does. It does. <laughs> I've got to bed, folks. <laughs> I've got to finish this by myself. I don't know how to work this thing. <laughs> I just pull the plug out. Ah, right. okay. <laughs> ah, thank you, Menno. Okay, here's the wheels are going to fall off royally. Now. Okay. Royally. So the first five or six questions are always the easier ones, usually. Question six What does the term Solera casks mean? This is Menno's definition. A, it refers to soul or sun as the casks are stacked on top of each other, reaching towards the sun. Is it B, it refers to the bottom row casks who are placed on the ground floor or suelo? Or C, it takes its name from Juan Soler, the bodega owner who invented the system in the late 18th century. <laughs> I mean, if, if we talk about we can't complain about this because we are going to learn from this. Yeah, no, but, I, but, I genuinely want to know the answer to this. I have no idea. 
Uh, I have Z. Uh, I think I know what I'm going to go for. Uh, so do I. I know what I'm going to go for. You want to talk this through between the two oh, of you? Dear. Oh, dear. Um, so I, I, I think... Do you, um, so I uh, can I say what I think it is? Yeah, well, I'm not going to change. I'll leave the paper. Right. So I, right. I, I think it's B because the wine travels from the top casks down to the bottom cask and then is disgorged. So, but I've never heard that the an explanation for the name before. So, I, I, I do genuinely want to learn what the answer is. I'm leaning heavily on the fact that uh, Solera means of the sun. But that probably just reads right, feeds right into your thinking. What I want Juan Soler to exist, <laughs> but, but I think that, that he does not, or he did not. No, the, the, so, so I'm, I'm so going to go a chance for a point back because I'm going to stick with eight. Ah, uh, so the score is tied again because Roddy oh, was absolutely oh. right. And I apologize. I apologize to all the That's Spanish folk for making up like... a cliche name like Juan Soler. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Juan Soler. <laughs> Excellent. Seven, uh, six for seven. Six for mm -hmm. seven. Okay. We both, we both lost one. Question seven: The relative importance of age statements was it, highlighted it? in the 2022 Oswas when a non-age statement whiskey won the best single malt category which whiskey oh, was that was it a the ardbeck curry reckon was it b glen scotia victoriana as, or was it c ardemarchen cask strength this given you better get this I one gave, right roy i gave it away tonight didn't i buddy so we'll uh we'll just we'll we'll do this one quite quick quick quickly shall we ready okay three Two, one. B, 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 B. B, 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 B. Absolutely B. Well done. Yeah, that, that's is quite a significant thing. An only statement to win the best Scotch whiskey. Do you enjoy Victoria? I do. I love it. Yeah. yeah. Great job. Yep. Okay, then onwards to question eight or nine, whatever. Uh, recently, Loch Lomond released a five year old single blended grain, and five year old and grain are obviously quite relative. How much five year old whiskey oh, actually went interview. into this release? And if you've read, read the, the Dram Face pages this week, you ought to know. I didn't read the review, Menno. I saw a, the review, I saw a link to it. 40%, is it B, 50%, or is it C, 60%? So all the other stuff is much older, but how much five year old whiskey went into this bottle? And I'm still guessing. <laughs> <laughs> I saw the link in several places and didn't didn't click on any of them. Ah, okay, I'm gonna guess. Okay, I'm and... being, I apologize, buddy. I'm guessing two. Three, two, one. Answers, please. Oh, A we and split. B. Oh, we are split again. We are split again. Roy, give yourself a point. It was oh. And nudge ahead. Nudge nudge ahead. ahead. So you're eight for nine. Uh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> it's so hard when the numbers are wrong. <laughs> My bad. Is that a wee picture okay. of there? Question nine. Which company puts a spin on the term non-age statement or NAS to emphasize age statements? Is it A, Got Compass it Box, or B, Decadent Drinks, or C, AD Rattray? <laughs> uh -oh. Seven and nine for Jimmy. If Roy doesn't know about Dramface question, I'll call shenanigans. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Woot says make molasses something out of nine. I think I know exactly where you're coming from, Mike. Oh, I'm on seven out of nine. <laughs> Ready? Okay. Oops. Yes. Three. Two, one. Answers, please. B and B, of course. So it is the noticeable yeah. age statement from the whiskey sponge. Notable drinks age statement. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. So Roy is on uh, eight for nine or nine for ten, actually, and Ronnie is on eight for ten. And I'm on eight for ten. Yeah. So you, you've you've beaten your your. 
personal best then, Roy. Yes, I have, man. Oh, thank you so much. <laughs> Happy birthday to me, buddy. Happy birthday. I'll let you a little bit closer. I'd give you a big hug for that one. Thank you. Kevin oh, Grant and Whiskey's in here tonight as well. <laughs> on a 7 out of 10, I'll beat you. <laughs> I've, got, I've got my own back. As we were lying in our twin beds on Isla, and I'm gradually just getting further and further and further <laughs> under the cover. I was like, getting demolished by Menno on replay. And Kevin's sitting there going, nope, got that right. Got that right, got that right. He scored a 7 out of 10 that night, and I scored a 2. Take it away, Menno. Do we have an ass hat? Of course we do. Noblesse oblige. <laughs> and to conclude, how can it not be a Roddy-themed question? You have been a regular guest on the VPUB over the years, Roddy, but including tonight, how many times have you appeared on the VPUB? <laughs> Ooh, I have no idea. What? Is it? Oh, come a? on. How many times does it feel like? <laughs> <laughs> is it a, exactly? No, where's the plug? Pull the this plug. Is, this is the asset. No. This is the concept of an asset. It's exactly you know this. <laughs> it, a exactly as much as there are malt distilleries with a capacity of less than two hundred thousand liters per annum. Is it B exactly as much as there are malt distilleries with a capacity of over ten million liters per annum? Or is it C, exactly as much as the combined distilleries owned by Beam, Centauri, and Doers? <laughs> yes. Menno, that is a, like the, yes. that is a next level asshat question. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> it's so much Tell you what, so I think I know the answer. Okay. <laughs> I feel confident in my guess. Okay. It's such a, a high level asset question that you've got Roddy out his seat. He's literally standing for this one. I'm raging. I'm raging. If, if, it's, if I get this right, I'll be standing too. Right, you ready? Right. Uh, I'm okay. going to go with. I'm going to go with. I'm going to go with my. I'm not even looking. I'm, I don't care. Oh no! It could be that. No, it could be that. No. Let's go. Oh, get on. Three, two, one. Answer then. B and a C. A B and a C. Okay, building up the tension. I, I, I was there, going B. I was going B. There, I changed my mind at last minute. Or there are about 11 distilleries, according to the Malt Whiskey Yearbook, who are uh, less than 200,000 LPA. There are about seven or eight distilleries with a capacity of over 10 million LPA. And there are 10 distilleries owned by Beam Centauri and Doers, if you add them up. And Roddy, you're a perfect 10 tonight. It's ten. It's your 10th time on the VPUB. No. It is. I, I said C. Yeah. I yes, D you got it right, Roy. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> 10! The 10th. The, the I've done this 10 times. I yeah. needed 11 questions for me to get a 10. <laughs> You've been here 10 times? Really? Does it yeah, feel like no? It doesn't. I was I was thinking like five or six. That's mad. You 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 have to more, five or six doesn't get a, an emoji. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> you have to toil it out. We need a Menno emoji. We do. <laughs> we, we really we, do. We need we need a, a like Menno's face under the ass hat hat. I can celebrate. I know that it's it's strictly speaking, I got one wrong tonight, so it's not a perfect ten. But it's but I did you score, did score ten a ten, ten take tonight. It, take it and bag it. Take it, take it. That's what the rules are all about. And, and it's that happy, take it and happy birthday, special, Roy. Happy birthday. Special uh, birthday gift from you, buddy. Thank you so much. Thank Menno, you, thank those you, thank those you. questions were spectacular. Cheers. Yep. Brilliantly, brilliantly, brilliantly pitched. Great quiz. That was fun, says Rob Smith. A pass mark or more on a mini quiz is a blazing victory. I agree, Tom. I absolutely agree. Papa Q is celebrating 8 out of 11. I love this. It's absolutely <laughs> tremendous. Thank you so much. Gino is saying, happy birthday, Roy. Cheers, buddy. Thank you, Gino. Thanks, my friend. I know that uh, Graham and family are over here without you this time. I know that you'll be sending you lots of messages and making you jealous if he's doing it right, that is, Gino. And I'm, I hope to see you back here again soon. Thank you, buddy, for the dram and the, the birthday wishes. Cheers, Gino. Menno, I can't tell you how pleased I am. Whiskey Weekend Dram is saying, oh, he's, he's speaking. Is that German? I don't know what that... Yeah, uh, Menno, maybe you can help me with Haro's comment there. What, what's Haro? I'm looking for it. Whiskey Weekend Dram. It's Gefelicit. 
gefeliciteerd. Gefeliciteerd. Happy birthday. Happy Congra birthday. Congratu congratulations. Literally, congratulations. Taking a Congratul moment to think about it. Like, Thank Philippines. you, Haro. Yeah, yeah. Thank you so much. And Fernando is saying, fantastic. Well done, Aguavide. Happy birthday to you. Thank you so much, Fernando. Hey, Roy, you got a birthday mulligan question. I did, Ian. I really did. And happy birthday. Thanks, Ian. <laughs> Thanks very much. Happy birthday, Aguavide. And thank you, says Malt Minion. And the... Uh, was this given that there was an unex unexpected 11? I'm not entirely sure I got a password. <laughs> <laughs> Mike, take it, just take Absolutely it. Absolutely, Jimmy Jazz is sure. saying, is in happy birthday, Roy. Scott Second is in as well, saying happy birthday, Roy. Cheers, Scotty. Good to see you, buddy. And uh, Daisy is saying happy birthday, Roy. Thank you very much, Daisy. Molasses is saying happy, uh, no age statement birthday. And uh, Hoyt, I think you've hit the wrong buttons hey i think i think you've i think that's a typo there buddy oh, um, it is. that's uh oh my goodness i don't even know how to Hoyt, uh, I hope that that is, there's, uh, the, <laughs> I don't know how you, I'm speechless. Hoyt, thank you very, very much, my friend. I know you've been to Scotland before. I know we've got to hang out together. I hope you're doing very, very well. I, I hope uh, that that is, uh, that isn't intentional. Uh, Danny Hebbington is saying, happy birthday, Skipper, and thank you, Roddy, your star. <laughs> thank you, Danny, thank you for your amazing support. Thank you for being uh, always here and so nice. Uh, uh, Hoyt, let's have a, a wee chat afterwards. Uh, Stephen Toth is saying, happy birthday, Roy. Missing all these uh, lives lately. Not good. Don't worry about it, Stephen. You never need to be here. Replays are great, but it's just not the same. Hope you Barflies are all doing well, Stephen. It's wonderful to have you in, buddy, whether you're live or on the replay. Cheers to you as well. And uh, thanks also to Danny. Cheers. I'm going to send Hoyt a link. I think so. <laughs> afterwards and say... Um, uh, did, did you mean to do that? Let's see what we can do. I'll send out to him now. And I hope that I've got uh, Mr. Hemphill's email address. Uh, Hoyt, you don't need to, to join. You don't need to join live, but I'll keep things after we kill the stream tonight. You can jump in if you like, and uh, we can work out if, if uh, we need to undo something there. I'll send that off to you. Spent like with two eyes. Jimmy Legg has bought me a dram as well. Thank you, Jimmy. When Roddy is on, uh, time really flies. And then the mi then mix in some men a meno. <laughs> Amazing, beautiful V pub. Jimmy, I, I just I love how appreciative you are. It's brilliant to have your energy here and your humor and everything. And your birthday super chats too. Thanks, Jimmy Legg. <laughs> Thank you, my friend. Looking forward to meeting Jimmy in the flesh. Do you know what's happening? You know, in, we've booked out the Bon Accord. I'd heard that. Aye. Saturday the 30th of September. The, I'd heard rumours of yeah, yes, from, from well, Graham. It's, so yeah, it's legitimately happening. Um, these mics are still working, aren't they? I hope so. They're still picking us up. Yes, yes. They are. The batteries are getting lower, but they're still working, yeah. Um, yes, we're very much looking forward to Jimmy Fest. I mean, I'm I'm a little bit... I'm, I'm worried about kind of overselling it a wee bit because it's like, you know... But I think... I've never met the man, but I feel like I know him very, very well. I, I <laughs> you feel, feel like you know. No, him. I do. Yeah, like the the um, he's he's a, a spiky character, yes. but I love that. Yes. You know, the yeah keeps us grounded. Uh -huh. he never. Uh, there's very little comments typed in without a, an edge of razor sharp wit. Yes, Alan yeah. Smith is saying, "Have a great birthday, Roy." Thank you, Alan. Uh, George Ellis saying happy birthday, Roy. Please send an ambulance as tonight's quiz has me bleeding on the ground. Oh, George, come back next week. Uh, I can't promise it's going to be any better. <laughs> but there's always another chance, buddy. Always another chance. Andrew Garcia saying feliz cumpleaños. Thank you very much. I can at least understand. Andrew, thank you so much. I can understand that. Uh, muchas gracias. Hills uh, is saying that's going to be some weekend. Uh, you're going to be here for it, aren't you? And Hoyt is saying. Uh, Spouth will disown me. <laughs> 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 uh, and Jimmy Legg is saying, uh, if Roddy shows on the 30th, I'll melt in a puddle. You'll be there for Jimmy for Legfest. Oh, hell yeah. <laughs> uh, I too will melt in a puddle. Yes, I know there's going to be a lot of puddle <laughs> melting. And, and then I was saying, in case of uh, he's yeah. here, in case microphone <laughs> dies, switch to interpretive dance. <laughs> You're still having a laugh. Uh, like that's, uh, yeah. Let's get my trails. Tom is saying, enjoy your day. Thank you so, so, so much. Hey, thank you, Tom. Amazing. I'm not even sure what I'm sipping anymore. 
I don't know how much of a profound message we got across <laughs> well, about I, age statements tonight I, I and think, all the serious things. I think, you know, we got the Benroma so badly wrong. And then I brought the two whiskies that were, I was trying to show how the number doesn't necessarily reflect the well, taste. That, of you the did liquid. that very well. Yeah. I, I think, I think your initial message that you know the age statement is dead. There's Long there's, there's always going to be age statements, but you have to look beyond that. You know, you have to you have to be open minded. You know, you have to say, what does it taste like? You know, what is this from? What is it born of? What's the concept? Is this a byproduct of something that's a distillery made purely, mostly for blends? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, is this a distillery that's out just to make the best possible quality, full flavoured malt that they possibly can? Uh, how much does it cost? Uh, can I get to try it before I buy it? And if I can't get to try it, can I trust my peers, the community, the folk? Uh, are they talking about it? Mm -hmm. uh, all of these things, it's... I thought the takeaway was going to be transparency tonight, but I think the takeaway is complexity. The the, the complexity of it all. I, Context I, is everything. Yeah, always. yeah. And and I think um, you know I, we didn't really dig into it quite enough, but I think the new distilleries are going in a, a slightly. You know, you have to. I'm I'm complexifying things again, just like I said at the start. But I think you you approach the old distilleries different from how you approach the new distilleries. Yeah. You know? Bruno Molinari, uh, to simplify is, no, to complicate is simple, to simplify is complicated, <laughs> okay. right? Yeah. It's uh, it's very, it's very, very true. Hey, Hellswood is saying that's going to be some weekend. Sorry, I, I did get that. Uh, uh, Graham Fraser is saying, uh, cheers, Aquavide, and Roddy Graham, cheers to you, buddy. I hope you caught your positive messages sent your way tonight. David Brody is in. Good to see you, David. Saying happy bur birthday, Roy. <laughs> it's going to be a birthday as well, and David. I, you know the tale. David, I, I do hope to catch up with you on uh, Isla. Um, uh, you know, we've conversed online, but we've never met yet, so hopefully we'll remedy that in May. Avoid. Avoid. <laughs> avoid. <laughs> and you, you will have a wonderful time, <laughs> but uh, you will have to give up a a whiskey life or two. Aye, aye, aye. David, it's always a pleasure. It's amazing to have you in here as well, buddy. Cheers. Aye. Uh, get, so, talk to David about Sherry. Aye. aye. He does. He's, uh, you know, Bunahaven has got a, an amazing asset there. Mm -hmm. I mean, they've mm -hmm. got amazing assets, Bunahaven and all the thing and all the team and everything. But to have somebody as down to earth and as endearing, he's turning out ambassadors from that visitor centre week after week after week. And uh, we need more of them. Hell's Wind is saying, Fad, Fan, sorry, Fab, Fun, <laughs> Vipa, Bry. <laughs> Happiest of birthdays, I think you can tell. Helen already is quite happy. Uh, cheers to Menno and Roddy. Thank you very much, Helen. Thanks to you. I've only got a wee drip left. I think we might need to pour some more, my friend. Uh, and Andrew Butler is in. Good to see you, Andrew. I was thinking about you today. I was filling up one of your sample bottles when you have the Latin names on the bottle. I had the age statement on it. I said, I wonder how Andrew's doing. It's nice to see you in, buddy. I hope you're doing well. Roman uh, is in saying cheers to you and Ronnie. Thanks a lot, guys. Enjoy your birthday. Thank you, Roman. And Pete had the same time to hit the sack. Thanks for organising Aquavide. Have a great birthday. Thanks as well to Roddy and Multimission for participating and to all of you, Slajiva. And I'd like to say a huge thanks as well to Sugar Kitty who gifted 10 Aquavite memberships to the Barflies. For anybody that's wondering, the Barflies keep the VPUB ad free. I never monetize a VPUB. You never need to sit through an ad to watch this content because of all you amazing Barflies. And Dan Thompson is saying, have a great birthday, Roy. Thanks to you, Dan. Thank you very much. Thanks for everybody that joined in tonight. Let's raise a glass together for this one mm -hmm. uh, as we go to the, the, the credits at the end. Menno, thank you, you star. Cheers. I love it. I just reach out to you and you're like, yeah, I'll do that. It's amazing. I don't know what time you have to start work in the morning. You're such a trooper. <laughs> uh, I'm buzzing tonight because I actually got a really good score. <laughs> so yes, <laughs> you can come back again. It's nice that you can mix it up. Menno, it's always a pleasure, buddy. Thank you. To thank you, you. Roddy, as well. Whether it's your sixth, seventh, or tenth, indeed, tenth. as it turns out, tenth, yes, it is. Um, I'm knew? sure it won't be the Who last. Knew? And uh, can we close out with uh, some uh, Roddy uh, and the, somebody's uh, Danny Heavington's put some uh, some Roy emoji in there as well, just to say thanks <laughs> to everybody. Uh, I'll join me That's next week again. Emojis, I'll be joining with another friend next week, except uh, next week it will be 
talking much more about uh, the industry side of things as we reach out to Scott Adamson from uh, Tomatin and Kubokin uh, to talk about what the industry drinks. What do they drink in their downtime? What, what gets them excited? What's the things? And of course, they can talk about their own stuff, but what we want is really what do you enjoy that's outside of your own portfolio and things like that. What does the industry enjoy? It's going to be interesting to see that perspective from one, actually the first guy who from the industry appeared on this VPUB way back as early as 2018. So I hope to welcome you all back for another VPUB session a week from tonight. I'm looking forward to it again. I won't have Roddy here next to me, but I've enjoyed very much my session tonight. Thanks to you all. You're all very dearly loved. I look forward to having you next week. Slange Cheers, men, are you star? Mm -mm -mm. What a birthday present to have. Yeah. <laughs>